Here. Here. Everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, Angel, you can sit. Sitting. No, no, no. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone, be, please be seated. Thank you. So the first item on the agenda is actually to uh, adopt the agenda. Do we have any other discussion points? I have no changes. Second. Motion and second to adopt. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. The next item is motion to acknowledge the minutes of January 23rd, 2023. I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. Uh, tonight, we're going to have our financial update uh, year end. Frederick Owino will present, and then uh, our financial advisors from uh, Munistat will also follow uh, Frederick with an overview, as we've done in the past, of the town's uh, financial condition from their point of view, but also the board has asked to for forward looking. I've discussed it with Noah team you know, as to you know what you know we might anticipate with respect to uh, bond you know rates uh, and market appetite especially since we have to uh, probably bond a certain portion of the highway uh, reconstruction you know that mike has requested for but we'll discuss that yeah you know, later on so frederick why don't you come up and present to the poor board and the community your financial report thank you very much um I will give an overview of how we, uh, the town performed for the uh, 12 months ended December last year. I uh, will start by um, highlighting some of our major revenue items. Um, one of our major revenue items is mortgage tax, and uh, based on the reports that we've been getting from the county, we did uh, quite well. Our projections uh, show that uh, we will end up with a revenue of uh, 956000 for the year, which is almost 205% uh, of what we budgeted for in 2022. Um, that's about 492000 excess. In the rental of real... So, uh, just a question. So the excess goes into fund balance? How Correct. How that work? Correct. Just for the town so they know? Yes, yes. That is where the excess okay. would go to. And then the other comment, what, uh, you know, I think you know, we've been receiving the mortgage tax reports for the first two months, uh, well, the first month and then December. So uh, as the board's aware, but for the town, those revenues are down you know, uh, significantly compared to the uh, past year. So I think our conservative estimates going into the budget are, are good, you know, and hopefully then later on in the year, you know, we'll see some more uptick as the market. Yeah, so what we saw in December was 34,000 and we're yeah. about 36,000 in January. Okay. So right. in that neighborhood, if you assume 12 months, 36,000, it's pretty close to what we budgeted. So, you know, we're a little bit short right now, but hopefully things will pick up a little bit. Yeah. But Correct. I think we're safe where we're at yeah. right now. Yeah. The other major revenue item that we really struggled with uh, during the COVID is the uh, uh, fines and forfeited bail. Um, and looking, looking at our uh, numbers for 2022, uh, we have actually done very well. I think the court quite picked up uh, 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 well. And our projections uh, indicate that uh, by year end, we will end up with an excess of 139,000 in the fines and forfeited bill, account number A2610. And I, I'll just note that our staff, particularly headed by uh, the clerk, you know, uh, you know is uh, really doing a fine job. I think, you know, paper-wise, organizational-wise, the judges have been getting the docket cleared, but Chris uh, has been, I think, doing an exceptional job from what I can see in talking, uh, you know, with her and the team. So we appreciate that effort because we did hit uh, quite a low point at, during yeah. COVID, as everybody did. But the efforts to build it back up have been yeah. uh, quite substantial. Not that we're there for money, but it means that they're clearing the court cases, you know, quite well. 
Uh, and then when we were doing our budget for 2022, we really scaled it down because we knew Correct. that anything right, could happen. Right, because we really are catching up, as you said, yeah. Mr. Supervisor, you know, from previous years. So can't expect that the revenue is going to continue to flow at 139000 more than budgeted. So, again, I think we're conservative on the budget, right. you know, taking that into account. Thank you, yes. Frederick. Just, uh, one comment regarding forfeited bail. Um, you know, because of bail reform, the amount of bailable So one of the things we should take a look at in the future is, as we start getting January and February numbers in, can we have a full year budget number so we can see, you know, if you took the numbers by 12 or whatever, that we're on a path to achieve the numbers. And that goes for all the, the items you're going to talk about tonight, just to make sure we're on, on the right path. I think we are, but this will just confirm what we believe. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, in my projections for uh, fund balance, um, I did include uh, uh, New York State aid. This is uh, sometimes called the aid and incentive to municipalities. We budgeted for 266,000. We haven't received it yet, but from past, past experience, uh, this money uh, will come uh, sooner or later. Now you've assumed in your fund balance that the 266.9 is in there for the A fund? Yes. Okay. And right. this is consistent numbers identical to yes, what we've had in the past, and the state hasn't given any indication that we've seen. No, I assume you guys haven't seen anything to indicate it's at all being touched. So I think it's it's a good number right now. So yeah, uh, looking at the summary of our you know uh, re revenues and spending, um, revenues at 108 percent in the A fund, 87 percent in the B fund. 95% in the highway. And expenditure-wise, um, A fund, 90% uh, at 4.2 million uh, year to date. Uh, not year to date, uh, end of year 2022. B fund, 2.4 million, 93%. Highway, 4.2 million at 100%. Uh, our cash balances uh, in the A fund. So just, uh, just a quick question on your yeah. expenditures. So right now in your expenditures for A, B, and D, B, you've assumed certain numbers yes. for our consultants, correct, that we haven't received billings yet, but we have an estimate of what we're expecting to receive based on you know prior history or 5% of the, the total budget? Yes. So you so have numbers in, in there. So you have so, roughly... Uh, in, in my projection, by the way, we have received all the bills from the professionals uh, for the year 2022 right now. Uh, in the, you know, when I reported uh, for in August, we had some issues, but uh, as we speak now, we have all the bills with us. So we are looking at them, we are analyzing them, we are going to allocate to the proper funds. And then, so whatever we have reported uh, uh, in here for in, um, attorneys up to May, but we have the June to December being analyzed and then we'll put them in. So, the amount of money that I've made a provision for is about 10% of the adopted budget in the A fund, which is about 440,000. So I've assumed we are going to incur an additional 440,000 in the A fund in estimating my end of year fund balance. So does and already you assume the numbers today. So on the 4.789 million, you've assumed another 440,000 dollars worth of expenses coming. Yes. Correct? Okay. And in the B fund, about 230,000 additional, and highway 210,000. So, but even with that, if you look at the estimation of the fund balance in the A fund, it has actually gone up compared to what I'd projected earlier on at 1.5. Now it's at 2.0 uh, A fund. Um, which is uh, our main fund here. Okay. So I would say that is re a, a really good, uh, uh, it's a good show for the year 2022, given that A fund has always had some uh, 
uh, you've always had some um, issues uh, there. I think, you know, the A fund, and then Noah, I think you can talk about a little bit, is that, you know, we, the board, you know, we've taken, you know, strong measures to build back up that fund and had dropped below a million dollars, and now, so that was something that we made a concerted effort to, to do all appropriately. You know, so that's been a good team effort, I think, uh, right. in building that up. And Noah can talk a little bit more about that. When he right. <coughs> and uh, so uh, in, in, in summary, basically what I'm saying is that uh, in, in projecting the fund balances, A fund, we are looking at now 2.0, like I've just said. In the B fund, 4.6 million, and in the highway, 2.9 million. And this was with the addition of $880,000 uh, uh, expected additional or, or assumed additional expenditure. So, Frederick, where are the uh, ARPA monies parked at this so, point? So uh, if you look at uh, the, five, the A fund cash, that is where the ARPA money yeah, is, 2.2 million in there for the ARPA. Right. So that's we approximately 2.2 million yes, dollars, yes. if I recall, just for the board's you know, benefit. That's yep. Have so you given can. the village their share yet or no? Sorry? They got it separately. Oh, they got so it separately? Yes. Okay, no, right, Jim? Yeah, no. They, they got it right. separately. Okay. We don't what, have to. What, what okay. happened is that the population, it's, the money is doled out by the ba right. basis mm -hmm. of population, and the population of the village was subtracted from yeah. the town's okay. population. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, so that basically concludes my short presentation. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. We have Noah here. He's going to, unless you Just have a Just a question. quick yep. question on yep. Parkland Trust. Yes. So we have roughly $400,000 in that account right now? Yes, yes, correct. So we've gone from roughly 550000 down to roughly 400000 And I know there's some big projects out there, like the Challenge ADA bathroom. Um, have we spent all the money that such that, or you just accounted for, I think. So what I'm saying is that even though we had 550 and we're down to 400, we haven't actually spent that extra 150,000, but you've allocated money so that we've taken that into account. So we know that that's gonna come out at some point in time. Yes, correct. Like over yes. at Mark's Field, you have the, the, I guess the bricks or the pavers that are gonna go up. That money's taken out, but it hasn't been expended, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you, right. Fred. Thanks, Thanks Fred. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Come on up, uh, identify yourself again, particularly for the public so they know who you are. Uh, yes, <coughs> the, hi, I'm Noah Nadelson from Unistat. This is uh, Jonah Serino from our office. Uh, we are what's known as municipal advisors. It used to be that financial advisors, and now, that, now we have a, a legal name um, after being regulated starting in, in 2014. So, this actually just one thing. The, the um, sheet that you have uh, you yeah. know, uh, to the board members, this is what they are working off of based on major you know, projects that we had identified collectively in the past. And you know, so that's, they've been using this kind of their cheat sheet for doing this. Right, so, so and, and, and basically what that really means is it's, the core of what we do is, is, uh, is debt management, right? So we, we accompany and work with the supervisor in Frederick's office to when it comes down to planning and planning a bond sale and borrowing money, and, and, and with that also comes uh, a rating a rating review. So, you know, when we issue bonds, and it's really only necessary when you issue bonds. I mean, bond anticipation notes don't necessarily need a um, a rating, but when you issue bonds, we have to have a call with an analyst from from Standard and Poor's, and 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 that's a you know a good hour long conversation, and and, and that we have, and um, you know the, the the town currently has a double A plus rating, which is you know excellent, excellent, you know well above average amongst amongst your peers. Um, and so, you know, some of the things that we've talked about and we've talked about with this board is is you know some of the best practices, some of the things that the the rating agencies look for. Period, and that is capital planning, that is you know kind of having you know conversations like this, um, and, and you know multi year planning, and then also you know this. So this particular conversation. No, we put together a lot of slides. I, I don't intend to, to go through a lot of this. I, I think that this is really just an update, and it's a good time for an update because it's the beginning of the year. Construction season is going to start. 
we'll be looking to borrow probably before the end of the year. I mean, nothing's in stone, um, but you know, probably you know any capital, uh, any any capital expenditures that you do look to borrow for over the course of this year. This is the time to really start thinking about it. And and you know we we I, I guess it would make sense to come back maybe in the in the summer that kind of thing when the audit is complete, financials picture is better defined. Sounds like you got a good report from Frederick regarding the 22 year. So that's all That's all good, right? So, but this is kind of the starting that process. And, 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 and so, so I just wanted to, you know, now, you know, part of the things that, the questions that we get asked, uh, you know, is what, what's the market doing, right? Um, and obviously the rates are higher. Um, you know, last time we went and, and, and the board made a you know, great decision. I remember you guys saying like, I think it's time to go to bonds now in 2020, and then, and, and, um, and that was a, a really, you know, fortuitous kind of time to be in the market, and, and you know, um, but those days unfortunately are not here right now. But they're not as high as you, as one would think. I like if we, I, I'm probably just going to speak to about five slides mm -hmm. here on this on this uh, little debt profile, um, <coughs> and then you know, as much I'll spend as much time as you want, but I figure. Uh, which, you know, this once you get used to seeing the style of the report, I think you can probably just do things, and it can always be follow-up questions. But I like starting over this one, this this first chart and this first page, which is the federal funds rate, and this is a historical chart going back to World War II, basically. Um, I can't say that I remember 1980, but rates were, you know, a lot higher at that point. But that I think that 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 chart is always. You know, really scary. But what you gotta, what you, what you look at, you know, is really from 2010 on. And this is the so the federal funds rate, right? So when we hear about the Federal Reserve raising rates and lowering rates, um, if you look at, you know, 2010, I mean, they really kept rates low at such a, you know, for such a short period, of, for a long period of time. Which, you know, we were talking about that on the on the way here. It was like, why did we have to be at zero? I, I don't know. But um, regardless, you see what has happened since you know, the beginning of this year. I mean, that's, you know, that's in the, in the news. I think we all kind of, kind of know that. Um, second slide, this is what, this is what we, we call municipal market data. And this is the information that we have. But the, the bond market isn't, that isn't so transparent. But there are two, two, um, two lines here. One is the 15 year, and one is the one year. And when you hear about the, the, the curve being inverted, um, it's basically short-term rates are just as high, if not higher, than longer-term rates. So that's the type, that's the type of position that we're actually in right now. What this is, this doesn't, this is like a benchmark, and then everything, uh, when when the bidders bid on the bonds, is actually a little bit of spread from these rates. But as you can see, really, I just want to point you to the August of you know July, the really the summer, and that's when the Federal Reserve pivoted and just went, started going gangbusters when they were doing their 75 mm -hmm. basis point hikes. And, but, but believe it or not, since the beginning of the year, rates have come down um, a little bit. And, and to tell you the truth, I think that's fair. I think we're in a, actually a decent, short-term rates are higher than they probably should be. But just to give you an idea, 15-year bonds, which is historically what the town, for road, you know, for road improvements, um, it would be generally 15-year bonds. They're still in the low threes. Now, bond anticipation notes, one years, are also in the low threes. Mm -hmm. So you can borrow for one year at three in the low threes or, or 15 years for in the low threes. Um, so, which is very unusual. Usually there's a, a big interest rate. Bond anticipation notes, remember, just one year debt instrument versus a 15 year debt instrument. And so usually there's a big advantage between the, um, you know, on the, on the bond anticipation notes versus, uh, you know, interest rate. Obviously what, what the risk is with uh, plans is that it has to be renewed every single year. So, so just a rates. quick question. So looking at the bond, you say they're, they're in the low threes. You know, tonight we're actually going to be talking about paving roads. Right. And we have to go out for a bond. What rate should we be using in order to calculate what we're going to pay? Is it three and a half? Is it four? What is, what is the going rate today so we make sure we have an accurate yeah. projection? Yeah, it's funny because that's, that's, that's what I'm going to leave you with tonight. And that's okay. The last, no, no, no. <laughs> all right, that's the all right. Slide, no, no, that's fine. The that's fine. That's, I'll answer the question. It's 375 we use. There's a chart in here that okay. shows that shows something like that, but we use the 375, which is conservative, you know, based on today. Now, unfortunately, we're, I think this is gonna be a volatile year. I, I, I think it's gonna continue okay. to be that way. I mean, it, you know, we were heading in the direction, and then that, that um, the number, uh, the unemployment number came out, 
you know, not this past Friday, but the Friday before, showing that people that you know people are working and the unemployment rate is still low, and that's actually bad news, <laughs> you know, believe it or not. And that means that oh, you know, that maybe the Federal Reserve is still going to continue to to raise to raise rates. I mean, the idea was rates started coming down. Everybody wanted to get past 22. We're obviously on the other side of it, right? I mean, I think that's what the market th thinks that the worst is behind us, and so now, and that's why you see rates settling in. But then when you get a number like that, it throws the market into a dizzy again. And so that's what we're gonna be watching. We're gonna watch the Federal Reserve, we're gonna be watching unemployment rates, inflation rates, and that, and watch what happens when, when, when the market, if we just have nice, steady, you know, and it's even a slow downtick in, in inflation, then you know, we should be good for this year. But when you see numbers that don't necessarily see, uh, meet expectations or not with the market, that's when you see this crazy volatility in the market, which just makes our life very difficult. Okay. Um, any questions, market, you know, related questions or anything like that? Okay. So next, the next slide, that's, um, that's slide number four. This is the, the outstanding principal amount over the past 10 years. Now, if you see, I mean, this is in spite of, you know, I think over this time, you know, the, the town has done a tremendous amount of work, you know, we're borrowed probably about you know, $20 million, whether it's, you know, for roads, United Wappinger Water, for the MS building, for HVAC here. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that have been accomplished over the last several years. And meanwhile, your debt has not gone up at all, which is like one would think, because things just cost, things just cost more. So like you've kind of made the unsustainable sustainable somehow. You know, then that's just to say that you might have some, you know, bump ups a, a little bit. That does not include this one band, though, that's outstanding for uh, Wildwood, which is another million. But basically, again, from 2012 down to 2022, fiscal year ending, it's the exact same number. And I think, again, you know, it's because of our planning. You know, we've set that discussions with you to try to keep it right at this yeah. number yeah. and then look at, you know, what our burn rate is as far as the amount of debt that, is coming down out in the future, which you've done, and we have, you know, I assume you'll touch upon right. that table yeah. going forward, but made a concerted effort to manage things conservatively and to use money wisely from the fund balance, right. you know, which is what we've done in order to keep that at a reasonable amount. I think what, you, I think what you're going to see, though, is looking at some of the projects from 23 through 26, that number is going to go up dramatically, assuming we do know, 25 percent of the project you list there because you have almost 73 million dollars worth of projects or the next time right. I mean, we're not going to do it naturally but that's what's listed on so that would naturally make our outstanding principles go up significantly yeah no this is a, it's unusual to, to, to see something like this um, but I think as the supervisor said though we, yeah. we've done a pretty good job paving roads and we've been consistent on what we're approving when you start right. getting into these yeah. bigger projects though that's when you're going to see yeah. the numbers start to change. Yeah, and that, but I think that's where, again, looking at fund balance, looking at grants, you know, looking at that balance is what we'll, you know, be doing, you know, for these projects or, you know, how we, you know, do certain of the projects ourselves or with others. But I think, you know, when we come to it, Al, you know, the key is really, you know, the debt service and how that, you know, comes down, right? When we look at over the next, you know, four or five years, right. you know, that will be drawn down so hopefully we can keep it that increase you know reasonable you know rate. Yeah, we should have a number of large payments coming off in yes. 23 and 24 so we expect that number to yep. come down the, um, the the next one is just you know you can't you have to do a presentation there's no presentation complete without a, a little bar chart right but the next one on to, on to six is that's the break this is the breakdown onto the pie chart which is the amount of outstanding that amount so that 23 million or so uh, broken down by by purpose, so you have general water, highway, and sewer. Um, and then on to slide seven. So this is what the debt service, the current debt service requirements are in the future. So it's reading from left to right, it's principal, interest, and total. So you really want to focus on the right-hand column. That's basically the total, the total debt service. You know, you see we have a little bit coming off in 24 and, and 25, right. and then so, um, but that's what it looks like right now. And then the, the following slides are just, and I'll flip through them. You got the general and water and highway. I'm not gonna, you know, you can look at all these. Um, 
again, there's a lot of numbers. I know you just saw, seen this for the first time tonight, so I expect to uh, um, going, but but going on. So one of the things, actually, going. Let's talk about that if we could. Um, that capital plan, or, or and, and it's and, and it's really the, the dashboard. That's the big the big paper. Then that's sure. where I apologize, but you'll, I need my glasses to see it. So uh, big numbers. <laughs> And, and this is, again, um, I, you know, when it comes to a lot of, a lot of this, I take my cues from what the rating agencies ask us. There's an expectation. And, and the, the problem I think the town has is that you are a double A plus. So I mean, that's, that's, that's up there. That's really up there. So, um, and, and so there's an expectation, right? So they ask for things like this, mm -hmm. right? As, as, part of, as part of their review. And there's an expectation that you do things like this. And I think, you know, Tim's, uh, uh, you know, CPL came up with this, you know, kind of great dashboard. And that's how we talk about it. It's, it's not, this is, it's not a plan. It's kind of like, that's a little bit of a misnomer. I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a needs list. It's a capital needs list. It, mm -hmm. Nothing is certain about it. There's nothing, you know, there's no commitment to fund anything at any specific time. But there's an intention, right? And it's filled with notes and, you know, about... You know the things that um, and and every now this pro this this particular one is from it's a little over a year old now and this is mm -hmm. you know and I talked to you know Tim about all right let's take this now again Th there's things that we've accomplished let's take these off the list there's you know I know that there's some I saw on the agenda tonight Schlott House is on the agenda there's that's not on the list yet but you know so we have to update this list and then just kind of keep moving forward right so it so we all see it on on one paper one piece of paper and say, okay, what is ahead of us? What has to be done? How do we prioritize these things? And then, of course, you know, come to us and say, okay, how do we, how can we afford this, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of stuff is dictated by, and that's, a lot of things are dictated by the grants, right? And that's mm -hmm. very, very common. Um, and, you know, God willing, we'll receive some of these grants. You know, I know, you know, one of the, one of the things about being proactive is that, you know, municipalities don't get rewarded for being proactive. It's the ones that have the all those, you know, those really, you know, tough projects that, um, you know, that, that's real, real need in some of the parts of the state. They seem to be the ones getting the grants, but they're they're out there, and and, and we'll keep trying to get those. No, but so, this is important to have for us, so we're able to mm -hmm. take a look at. You know, I mean, we, we may not be able to do all these things in 23 or 20, 24 through 26, but it's something we have to keep an eye on. Things right. that are going to eventually need to be done. It's, it's good to have, and then, of course, that will allow us to do, you know, capital planning for the next five to ten years. So, again, if things have to get done, they get done. And, you know, we've got some major ones like Fleetwood. We've known about Fleetwood. We know we have to do it. It's just a matter of, of timing. You know, Wildwood, same thing. Uh, so there's things that we know that we have to. We've already talked about those things already, so we're well aware of them, and it's good that Tim has these on the, the chart already. Right. Some of the other stuff, you know, we, we kind of know about it. We've looked at it like some of the water and sewer down Route 9, but that's right. something that's probably not imminent, but we yeah. still got to keep our eye on it. Sure, exactly. Yeah. Right. And that's the idea. And, and I think, you know, what we'll, we'll be hearing from Tim in a future meeting is the update of this as far as the project yep. list, where we are, status, and then we'll be adjusting the numbers and working with NOAA. And NOAA will work right. with us. And so some of these, you know, they were all done. I mean, it, you know, and, and let's, you should be, you know, can, Certain th things have been getting done. There's a lot, and so you should be commended for that. I mean, just all the just all the park improvements. You know, last time that we yeah. when we did yeah. update that, there's a lot of work at Carnwath and Spook. I'm just looking at this and list. The highway garage and the yeah. highway programs. You know, including right. Old Troy and what have you. We've taken care of a lot of that, so we're in the process of doing it. So the you know that's a working document, and, and the intent is to kind of you know look at, um, update that, and then over the course of the next few months, decide if if any. You know, will be borrowed this year, if that's if necessary. Um, so moving back to moving back to the you know the debt profile. What I figured I'd just do is again, it's all part of what the, the rating agencies look at. And I started with you know page uh, you know slide twelve, um, and that's a five-year trend. It's all about they like looking back at these five years. Now this is only through twenty-one. You know, so so understand that you know this doesn't. Again, this is going to be updated as well once we have 22 figures to come in here. Um, the only, the one thing I will say is, yeah, the, the, the S&P is very hyper focused on the general fund, right? Well, it's a, it's up to us collectively to say, well, we have water, we have sewer, we have the D, D fund, we have highway, we have a lot of other operations sure. here. Um, 
you know, where they see fund balance, uh, you know, over the where it is right now is basically where they want it to be, you know, in the general fund. All the other funds are, are you know, very strong. Um, and if there's any, you know, so, uh, but but I, that's my only kind of warning tonight. I have nothing but good things to say yeah. about this place. But I mean, what, what they were based on, what, a couple years ago when we had that conference with them, they were very concerned about what was then the ongoing burn rate on the A fund. So, you know, we've worked hard to address that, which has then brought, you know, the townwide, you know, fund right. back up to where right. the agencies really do like to see it. Yeah. I think, you know, from the past discussions, they also, as Noah said, if they see this and they know that we're managing mm -hmm. the dashboard right, then mm -hmm. some drawdown on the A fund they're okay with as long as they see that revenue stream, right. which for us, because we have the village, is tougher to meet than some of the other municipalities in yeah. your neighboring. Yeah. So the last slide is is what you, you kind of you know asked about. Um, right. And you know, once we once we make a decision so so it's all coming, you know, it's all, it just all gets done, you know, collectively. And this is one of the things that we're asked by our clients is, okay, if we borrowed $2 million for a highway to pave roads and do whatever else that may be, what would that look like, mm -hmm. you know, against our, against our, mm -hmm. um, you know, current debt service? So if I just, that's that last slide is, is slide 17. The left-hand column is the current debt service. And as you can see, in, in, in 24, it basically stays, but then in 25, it comes down. So um, something gets paid off. And so if you layer in a new, uh, we just did a $2 million bond in 23, um, based on a 3.75%. That's the rate that we used. And we kind of layered that in um, next to it. And then, you know, what does the debt service look like after the fact? So I guess the point is, yes, there's a little bit of bump in that highway debt service line, but you know, two million does not. I mean, it's doable. And, I mean, and for a town say. with, you know, uh, over 100 miles of road, road, you yes. know, that we have, what we've done, and, uh, you know, for the public too, is brought back into a regular, you know, repaving and repair work schedule every year, approximately the same amount of mileage, unlike other communities. So, you know, this was what we asked, you know, I told Noah that, most likely will draw down some off of fund balance and then the other would be the bonds. But, you know, I wanted him to put in at this, you know, two, mm -hmm. you know, two million level so we get an idea, which still is, you know, a, a good number compared to what we see others doing. Yeah, and, I mean, and maybe Mark, you know, will uh, know, you know, Mark Diebold, who's here from Dutchess County Transportation, talk about highways later on. So you should stay around and hear what Mark has to say. <laughs> no, but, you know, the same thing, you know, as we've managed this, aspect of our town finances extremely well you know then you know this has enabled us to come out with you know, some good numbers when you look yeah at yeah so uh, what's and, what's the typical if there is you know i i know in the corporate world you have uh, mm -hmm. angela and i and now chris all in the corporate world know that there's a great there's a, a fund to equity and a balance and there's a fun you know percentage that you uh, will look at you know, what is, uh, what are municipalities our size looking at? Because I think we're at the low end, aren't we? Uh, well, that, I mean, on your debt, you know, it's funny because the way the market looks at it, the way the rating agencies look at it, they also look at the, the debt of the, you know, outside areas. Right. Right, so they also look, I mean, they look at fixed costs altogether, OPEB, other costs, employment benefits, and pension contributions, they all fall into debt. I try to, you know, isolate that. You know, the, the, the county's doing a whole lot of work. Right. But, you, you know, with, and, and so they're going to be taking on a lot of debt. So you have to think about it. The resident here is, is responsible for a portion, not only the town's debt, but, a, but if you live in the village, a portion of the village's debt, sure. a portion of the school district's debt, right. and, then the, and then the counties. counties. So I like to look at us just how we, we are, what mm -hmm. we can control, right? right. And so you know, we, I think debt service as a percentage of the budget is that, kind of, is that metric. And that generally should stay in between that 8 and 15% mm -hmm. of the budget. Um, Debt service as a percentage of. Now, um, you know, again, if you pay down your debt faster, it might wind up becoming um, a. Uh, it might be become a bigger percentage of the budget, but you're paying it down faster, so that's actually a, cr a credit positive. Um, 
the other the other thing is that they look at is um, you know just overall the, the amount of debt as a percentage of the budget. So, mm -hmm. um, and that should be, I'd be surprised. I mean, anywhere from uh, you know sixty to one hundred and twenty percent of the budget. So that's so. For instance, you know, if you have uh, you know a four million dollar you know highway fund, I mean that, that shouldn't be more than you know four million dollars. Right. It should actually be less than that. But right. that's and so that's that's at least not a hard and fast rules. I mean, overall, your debt is you know low mm -hmm. as a percentage of you know as a, as a percentage of other you know factors, a percentage of market value, a per capita value. So there's a lot of different ones that they, they look at, but. You know, obviously, we, we, we have to show the whole picture. We try mm -hmm. to show them the entire picture, that the debt has been consistent, that it does get paid down, you know, quick. We haven't been, over the past 10, several years, it has been, you know, very sta stable and, and, and steady. So, um, again, you wouldn't be a double A plus if there was an issue, if they thought that we, if we really thought there was an issue. I think the rating agencies are making a more concerted effort to focus, though, on post-employment benefits and f other fixed costs. And the, contributions that's a, so with the double a plus bond rating we're getting that says we're in excellent position then correct yeah yeah i mean yeah yeah you absolutely are i mean i really honestly there's nothing there's that means from the ratios that you're looking at this eight to fifteen percent total debt to budget and also total amount of debt to the budget we're in great shape that's what that says otherwise we yeah, wouldn't get again, those ratings again what you can control right and that's that's what that's what that's what we try to focus on that's the that's the that's what we uh, also um, talk to the rating agencies about. They have their own metrics. You know, there's computer that's very model driven, right? So, um, well, the, they use, you know, com they yeah. use computers. I mean, the la last time <laughs> that we had the call, you know, was you know the concern about the capital plan and the dashboard. You know, right? You know, and that's what we've gone to. You know, a significant sure. length to make sure that. We addressed that, you know, better than they thought we were addressing it. We did have that; we had projected out, but you know, this dashboard goes a long way, right? You know, Noah, for addressing that and giving them comfort that we're looking at right. long-term capital right. and yeah. revenue. Yeah, and I've heard you. You know, I'll talk about best practices, and right. and, it, and that's one of those things, right? I mean, it's it just it's just one of those things. And, and again, when you get up to that level, I don't want I don't want everything to be dictated by the, the rating agencies, mm. really. I mean, the focus is on the people behind me, and, um, but, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, but, but because they have their own ideas, you know, as to what, you know, what should look like. But nevertheless, you know, these are certain things that one should do, and there's an expectation. There's an expectation that you complete things like this and have, have these types of conversations. And it helps me, too, when I'm you know, advising you guys and also on the phone with these guys at the radio agencies. Well, I think this is good for us to see. This yeah. is very informative. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much Let's for your time tonight. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thanks, Bill. The um, next item we have is I'm going to invite Mark Diebold up to talk about Dutchess County transportation initiatives. You know, we've been working closely with Mark. Uh, I've now in sixth year, and uh, Mark's the director uh, when it comes to this uh, section of our county services and has done really a great job working with us in Wachinger and looking forward to it. We haven't had the fortune to have you here, but part of our ongoing uh, community service wanted to have Mark here come and present to us, talk to us tonight. Thank you. Yeah, uh, for the record, uh, Mark DeBald, uh, Transportation Program Administrator for the Dutchess County Transportation Council, otherwise known as the DCTC. Uh, for context, we are a small division within the Dutchess County Planning Department that focuses on transportation planning activities. So I do have a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, it's not a lot, it's only 20 slides, so I should try to keep this down to about 15 minutes. And I'm trying, I guess logistically, what's easier for me to uh, present? You try that manually. 
So uh, just, I guess, you know, uh, real quick, we'll, we'll keep this about a 15-minute uh, presentation. Um, so I just wanted to introduce uh, the town board, the town, all interested parties, uh, to the Dutchess County Transportation Council, uh, the DCTC. So uh, what is the DCTC? Uh, we are what's called a Metropolitan Planning Organization, otherwise known as an NPO. And I apologize for all the acronyms, but our business How's that? Uh, so we have lots of acronyms. I apologize. I'll try to explain them as I move along here. Um, so MPOs are required by federal law for areas of 50,000 people or more, urbanized areas. Those are defined by the Census Bureau. Uh, the DCTC was originally established in 1982 as the Poughkeepsie Dutchess County Transportation Council, another acronym back in Back in the day, it was the PDCTC, but we changed over to the DCTC a few years ago. We get paid bonuses for uh, creating acronyms, so I do yeah. apologize. It's just, it's just the nature of our business. Uh, long story short, uh, an MPO uh, it really provides a forum for state, county, local agencies, the public, uh, transportation providers to really establish priorities uh, for their, their metropolitan area. So it's really a, a place for all these entities to gather, sit around the table, in person, virtually, to really identify what those priorities are and ultimately program federal highway dollars, transit dollars, and also federal planning dollars that meets those priorities. Uh, who we are not, and so sometimes it's important to uh, kind of establish you know, what we do not do or who we are not. And we are not New York State DOT, we're not counting public works, we're not the MTA, we're not counting public transit, even though we do work for the county, we're not counting employees and we're not the town of the highway department, but we work with all those agencies really to establish those priorities. And we do provide planning assistance to all those agencies, and when we can, federal planning dollars or federal highway transit dollars, again, to uh, actually implement projects or implement services. So even though we don't build roads, uh, we work with a lot of folks who do, and uh, we do try to assist the local communities with setting those priorities and providing that assistance. So a quick snapshot um, on the federal role in transportation. I mention this because we are established by federal law. And so we have to follow these federal guidelines and a lot of the federal laws dictate what we have to do uh, as an MPO. And I'm not gonna go through the laundry list here, but long story short, back in 1956, President Eisenhower created the national highway system, the interstate system, and that really uh, started the ball rolling for the federal uh, investment in transportation in the US and through the 60s and 70s, that role increased, the roles and responsibilities of MPOs like us uh, were expanded in the 70s and 80s, especially in 1991 with ICE-T. But they continue today with the uh, investment infra infra the Infrastructure Investment Jobs Act, IIJA, uh, which is the infrastructure act that we uh, hear about in the news uh, nowadays. A uh, snapshot here of the US, again, urbanized areas have an MPO. There are about 400 MPOs in the United States. Uh, they range in size from very large ones like New York City or LA or Dallas, Kansas City, uh, to very small ones like Elmira or Ithaca. And so just to bring it home uh, to New York State, there are 14 MPOs in New York. We work uh, collaboratively, uh, collaboratively with all these uh, sister agencies. Uh, and we do have a, a variety of topics. We talk about safety, transit, traffic operations, freight, uh, bicycle pedestrian activities. So we actually share a lot of information and best practices uh, with our uh, other MPOs in New York State. Again, these are all representing uh, those urbanized areas. So uh, bringing back even further down to Dutchess County, uh, we have a voting body or decision-making body that uh, Supervisor Thurston is actually a member of. Uh, it's 16 voting members, and that's the body that actually acts like a town board on our DCTC product. So any, any uh, funding that we approve or projects that we approve get decided by that policy board. We have a planning committee that supports the policy board. Uh, the planning committee meets uh, about monthly. Uh, it's open to all 30 municipalities. And that's where we actually do some day-to-day -day, uh, review of interim uh, planning products and try to get the word out on uh, what's happening in the MPO transportation planning business. Then we also have subcommittees. Uh, not to go over all of them, but we have a bicycle pedestrian advisory committee, 
uh, that we work with, a complete streets committee with the county, and we work with the transit advisory committee uh, when they meet. Quick snapshot of our voting body. Again, 16 voting members. Uh, we have a slew of permanent voting members. Town of Wapacher has actually been a, a permanent voting member of our MPO for over 40 years. Actually, it's uh, a permanent voting member in our enabling legislation. Uh, we also have a slew of uh, what we call rotating members from our uh, partially urbanized or rural areas, but all told, 16 voting members. So as an MPO, uh, again, regardless of where you're at, all 400 of us have to follow these federal rules, and all of us have to produce three core products. And those include a transportation plan, which is our strategic 25-year 20, vision for a metropolitan area. We have a capital program, which we call the Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP, and a planning program, which we call the Unified Planning Work Program, or the UPWP. Again, sorry for the acronyms. <laughs> Uh, so a quick snapshot on the transportation plan. Uh, this is our 20-year look at the priorities uh, for the area. We do a county-wide plan. Uh, our current one is moving Duchess forward. So we've done about seven of these county-wide uh, plans. Uh, every five years, we update it. Uh, it does have to be constrained uh, by financially constrained, so it can't be a wish list of projects. Uh, the moving Duchess forward is actually an online product. So I would encourage folks to just kind of Google movingduchessforward.com and I'll get, you can dive into our long range plan. Uh, just a quick snapshot of what the plan talks about. Uh, we really broke it down into uh, four different sections. One to take a look at the demographic and transportation data in the county, identify what the trends are in the next 15, 20, 25 years. We take a look at safety data and reliability data, including congestion data. Uh, we have a policy section on our advocate advocate section that takes a look at best practices and policies that the county and the towns can do to try to improve safety and reliability across our systems. And then we also have an invest section which takes a look at the transformative projects and packages that we recommend uh, throughout the county. So that's the first core document, the long range plan. Uh, the second core document is our capital program, or TIP. And this is where we actually apply or program federal funds for a project. We identify the project sponsor, the schedule, the scope, the funding source, and that's laid out in a five-year capital program, very similar to local uh, capital programs, except this is strictly looking at federal funds across the county, across jurisdictions. So it can include projects from New York State DOT, the MTA, Metro North Railroad, County Public Transit, or even at the town level if they're using federal funds. So we update that tip every three years, and we just did an update last summer on that. So a quick, uh, look at some of the projects that were on that capital program close to home to town of Wappinger was the roundabout at 376 uh, New Hackensack and All Angels Hill. That was a federally funded project implemented by New York State DOT, but that was on our capital program. So that's an example of the projects that are included on our capital program tip. I've heard great uh, reviews about it. I enjoy this roundabout. It's, uh, I think it's a vast improvement. Uh, another project, the uh, reconstruction of Old Telpo Road by County Public Works. Again, that was a federally funded project that was on our capital program or TIP. And then our last, our third core document or product is our planning program or UPWP. Uh, this is where we uh, identify planning tasks and budgets for each year. We follow state fiscal year calendar. This is where we identify what are we going to work on as planning staff uh, through the year. And so a quick example of, uh, for Town of Wapacher, uh, way back when, over 10 plus years ago, uh, we actually funded that corridor management plan of Myers Corners Road uh, through our UPWP. But we do a lot of other planning work, of course. Uh, we do other corridor studies. We just finished up a uh, very ambitious study of the arterials in the city of Poughkeepsie, and also the uh, modified bow tie by the Mid-Hudson Bridge, which uh, I'm sure most of us have, uh, can attest to its uh, um, challenges, shall we say. Uh, we also work on some pedestrian bicycle plans. We've done a slew of pedestrian plans across the county. We just finished one, one up in the village of Pauling uh, and the village of Milliton and some work in the city of Beacon. Uh, we do a lot of crash analyses. We'll do uh, safety assessments of high crash locations uh, throughout the county. Uh, we've recently done a lot of work with County Public Works uh, on a few uh, high crash locations. We do a high-end speeding analysis of our uh, traffic count program that takes a look at the speed data 
and we can try to track down where high-end speeding is occurring. They also do some transit work uh, with our county, county public transit and human service agencies. Uh, so, you know, one of the resources that we do bring to the table, I think, for local municipalities also is our ability to gather and analyze data. And so we do have a traffic count program uh, that takes a look at county and local roads across the county. We have over 760 locations. We typically count locations every three years. And so we also uh, take a look at pedestrian bicycle counts. We have uh, a contractor with video camera equipment that can count pedestrians and bicyclists for us. Again, we do the high-end speeding analysis to try to find high-end speeding locations, crash data analyses off the state crash system, and a lot of GIS mapping uh, applications. So this is a, just a screenshot of our traffic data viewer uh, that uh, has all our traffic count information <laughs> from 1999 uh, to the <coughs> present. Uh, it also includes New York State DOT counts, so we have count data for state highways, county roads, and uh, many local roads. Great resource, highly recommend it. You can drill down to you know, your local level and uh, you know, kind of get that data. And then just a little snapshot of what we're doing right now. Uh, we're finishing up a pedestrian plan in Dover Plains, in the town of Dover, uh, which has uh, been a great effort. Uh, we're working on a uh, sidewalk feasibility study in the town of Poughkeepsie on Spackett Hill Road by Spackett Hill High School. And we're just starting a look at the Columbus Drive weave, uh, what I call Thunderdome, uh, by the city of Poughkeepsie, by, uh, behind the Civic Center of the hotel uh, area in the city of Poughkeepsie. Uh, we're also working on some uh, resiliency, uh, vulnerability uh, planning work, uh, which is taking a look at the trying to prepare our system to better handle extreme weather events. So we have a, a consultant on board that's helping us prioritize where we might uh, harden our system uh, to be, be better prepared for those, uh, those climate events. Um, and then we're also just starting to look at a rail trail study of uh, the abandoned Beacon Line between uh, the city of Beacon and Hopewell Junction, uh, East Fishkill, uh, through the town and village of Fishkill, and uh, there's looking at some rail trail possibilities uh, for that corridor. And so just a quick recap, and we do throw a lot of things during these presentations, but I guess the, the takeaways here, uh, the DCTC in, in, in one sense uh, serves as a proxy for federal transportation policy and programs at the local level. And it's probably the best way to kind of see what we do uh, as an MPO. Again, we do these three core documents or products, the long range plan, capital program, planning program, but we also do some regional, county-wide, and local planning studies and initiatives, and we do serve as a great planning resource and data resource uh, to local communities. Uh, this is our contact info. There's only three staff, including myself, so we're a relatively small MPO by most standards. Uh, but I think we punch above our weight, and we have a lot of assistance from uh, the county planning department and uh, the folks who uh, work for the planning department there. And I, just to finish it off, uh, if we have a little time, you know, we're always interested in learning about the priorities at the local level. Uh, so, you know, we, we took a swag at maybe potential issues that are in uh, the town of Wapacher, of uh, certainly routes 9 and 9D, uh, whether it's congestion related, safety related, uh, sometimes signal timings, are uh, an issue, uh, or multi-use trails, opportunities, challenges, uh, and transit services, so just changes uh, to the transit service. So I, this is just a snapshot or ideas that I threw up on the screen. Um, certainly, open, you know, welcome any questions or comments or thoughts about what folks have heard. Well, the traffic on 9D is horrible. Right. It has been for I don't know how many years. <clears throat> I haven't seen anything from the state to improve it. It's a two-lane highway. My constituents sit in that traffic, and it's ridiculous. And and something has to be done about it. And I and, and I'm serious. This is a major, major problem. Yeah. And the winter, the summer, the spring, the fall. And I don't see anything being done. And how do we prioritize that? That's a major road between Beacon, Wappingers, all the way up to Poughkeepsie. Yeah. I think, yeah, and I think uh, it's having the, starting to have the conversations with New York State DOT for sure. And, uh, you know, NISDOT's a, a big organization. Um, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's, and so sometimes, it, you know, it, it takes time to, you know, start that dialogue. But, uh, you know, certainly the, I mean, as an MPO, I mean, you know, we do facilitate those, those conversations. So I would I invite just, them yeah, to come right. and sit in traffic yeah. 
between the hours of three o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon yeah. right. and six o'clock and see how long it takes. Yeah. I've lived here my entire life and all I have seen it is get worse. Yeah. yeah, I've talked with Mark about <clears throat> assisting us in doing that. You know, we've had sit down actually, Tim uh, Mood and the CPL team talking about how to manage that. You know, of course, they've had discussions before about even a, a roundabout at Chelsea in 9D, but nothing's really gone very far with NYSDOT. So again, whatever you can do, as we've discussed, that yeah, you know, will be most appreciated. That is a major problem, yeah. especially people. The population in this town has gone so high, and nothing has changed. That road has not been changed at all. Yeah, and, and traffic I mean, is. The, the traffic light at Chelsea Road and 9D was put in with the thanks of Hamilton Fish Jr., who was the congressman right. way back when. Right, sure. sure. Seriously, yeah. am I right or wrong? Yeah. And That's right. I can tell you now the accidents that happen there. Yeah. And the speed. Yep. And again, yeah. nothing is, is being, and I'm not blaming you. Oh, no, no, yeah. But yeah. I mean, the state has not done anything. Right. And That's sad. And I would love Governor Hochul to come down here. <laughs> I'm not kidding. No, it's no, a I'm, very sore point. I, it's yeah. a safety thing, too. And so we do, I mean, we do a safety analysis or crash data analysis as part of our long range plan. I have to take a look at Route 9D and see, you know, where that landed. Um, tra traffic is yeah. always tricky. And, you know, we, we, hear, we hear the issues about speeding and traffic in every community. Um, and that's not to discount the, you know, the challenges here. You know, certainly taking a look at 9D and some of the hot spots, um, you know, that, that's certainly a possibility. And sometimes it's trying to get a sense as to nice dots where where do they think they're going with uh, their improvements so they you know they did they, they did tackle 376 new hackensack and all angels hill it's the volume sure. between those yeah. two roads even route nine right how many people have sat in route nine in traffic i commend them for fixing the bridge I mean, that's, well, it's not that's, fixed yet. Right. Well, but I mean, it's better than it was. Yes, it will be. That is I understand that, but you yeah. still sit in that traffic, yeah. and there's nothing and, being done. I think it's wonderful, 376, but that you can't come, you can't compare the volume of traffic. And, and the problem, Mark, you know, we've had this discussion is that also on 99D, we have a lot of heavy trailer <laughs> trucks carrying sand, all sorts yeah. of stuff, running through, including the village at those speeds. You know, when we talked with Nystad before you know they of course refused to do anything with respect to lane expansion you know they said that the issue is you know really what you have up there signal timing you know maybe right. intersection you know putting sensors and monitors so we need to as the councilwoman said you know that's a high t priority yeah. for the town to jumpstart that of course route nine with the increased traffic flows you know and and that's all shown on his map that he has it counts traffic mm -hmm. data yeah. the volume is is unbelievable you can you can move traffic but there's too many cars and there's and not cars. enough places to let them right. go yeah. you can change the lights five times you can have so many traffic circles where are they going to go i was in the village coming back on 90 today there were six heavy what i call from texas 18 wheelers sitting there waiting at the light you know so that increases the and in the village where we have, you know, high density population, it's a real issue that they're even coming on that road. But Especially with the people coming up from the city, moving into this area. That has to be looked at. That has to be addressed. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll you know, we'll put that on our, uh, our Thank you. plate. I, we can have, certainly, we have, to have, we have to have some conversations with the uh, New York State DOT and right. see where we can go. Yeah. I would yep. love to have a yeah, follow-up sure. on that. And I, I yeah, think sure. our, our engineering for CPL can share what they've had yep. with discussions, and I think some of the frustrations with the respected, yeah, nice dot. I, I will tell you though, as a compliment, the circle over there on 376 All Angels and New Hackensack um, has been tremendous. The the amount of traffic flow has really so much better than what it was before. Alleviated a lot of the issues that we had there. We were backed up past the dentist office take three or four lights before you can get through that intersection. So uh, it seems to have worked out very positively. So just want to give you a little bit of positive feedback on that. Sure. And we'd like to see more projects like yeah. that, like on right. 9D, as the council right. suggested. Yeah. Well, and, and I know that, you know, in the county roads, Commissioner Balkine is looking very closely at those projects, including right up here 
you know, at Sergeant Palmatier and Middlebush of the possibility, whether it's a new light and turn lane or a roundabout type of concept for that, as I think you're aware. So, you know, we just need more to get the state moving because uh, the state has kind of dug in its heels and hasn't really mm -hmm. been that helpful. And I will say the roundabouts do work. Uh, you s I mean, that uh, when they're, when they're hey, properly when designed. They're, exactly, right. when, when they're, they're properly, properly designed. designed. Right. Have you ever been stuck on a roundabout on Cape Cod in the summer <laughs> no. on your way to go in over New the Jersey, side of more? Right. Right. Okay, right. so there's yes. good and bad. Right, understood. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? No, no but, We're but good. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Mark. Appreciate okay, your time. You. I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it. The uh, next item will be to open our public portion uh, prior to our uh, discussion topics and I think uh, a very light uh, resolution tonight. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Over second. Public hearing. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion pass. Any, anybody that would like to make any co public comments tonight? Mark, do you have a business card? Yeah. And can you uh, email that yes, you, uh, to me, you know, so we can uh, post it? Anybody? Anybody? Come on, don't be shy. Yeah. Okay. okay. Seeing none, I'll make a motion to close, close. the public hearing. Okay, motion okay. to close. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion pass. I have to apologize. Um, Craig isn't here, oh, oh. and that's yes. probably my fault because I didn't give him the time. So can we move him to the 29th yeah. or the 27th? Uh, yeah, limited items, 27th, since that's a workshop, but sure. I would like to put him on okay. for the 27th because this is important. Okay. Unless he comes in again, apology. Okay. <clears throat> so okay. moving right along. The right? next one is uh, Schlott House uh, Park and Town Hall improvements, and uh, Tim can't be here tonight, you know, so Jonathan is going to talk about that. We've had uh, discussions in our ongoing consultants meeting, so why don't you bring the board up to date and identify what the uh, uh, challenges and opportunities are with respect to that? Because this is primarily related the board, you know, with respect to drainage, with respect to the band shell, you know, which needs significant repair and, uh, and also uh, electrical and parking, right? So Jonathan, the floor is yours, thank you. So at Schlatt House Park, uh, we went through a list of upgrades that Jessica had uh, mentioned to us. And we put together some initial budgeting items to do these upgrades. Um, I broke them down. I can give you each one listed and then the project total. So the three that we talked about was electrical, the band stage, and treating the entire site as one big number. Uh, the electrical upgrades that we saw that would be required was 72,000. To build a new band stage, we estimated about 100,000. And to do all upgrades to the site, that would help with some of the flooding that's going on there and whatnot. That would be about 464,000, given a project total of 636,000. The only thing this doesn't address is if we're going to add additional parking onto that site. We haven't studied that yet. <clears throat> and as I you know recall, with respect to the band stage, you know that's. Uh, also a recommendation based on the current condition of that and the Correct. fact that it you know may you know, be cheaper to tear it down and to rebuild it to and rebuild. they've they had some preliminary ideas which when i think when tim gets back if we're interested in looking at it further they can peel the layer of the onion back yeah we looked at um so the band stage is just strictly rebuilding the band stage itself or is that just doing repairs what is that because the electrical if you look behind that building <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'd want to be playing up on that stage. No. Yeah. Jessica told me she's not going to plug in the extension cord any longer. So. We only looked at doing a brand new band stage, but what we looked at was the option of removing it and then having a rental trailer that would open into a stage. We looked at a smaller scale stage, and then we looked at a larger scale stage. So the highest number we came up with was about 100,000. So there's like preformed concrete and various, you know, uh, interesting. Can we concrete. can we do the electrical independent of the stage itself? Yeah. We would we should really think about addressing that sooner versus later. To move the band shell from, if oh, you're oh, looking yes. at it, to <coughs> they proposed it the to back, with the back to the south. We yeah. have talked about yeah, that. Yeah, they've yes. talked about that. It yeah, just seems that would cover the whole part. Right. Yeah. That's a much more expensive yeah, proposition. Yeah, because you're playing huh? to the. 
Well, no, you know, it's not necessarily more expensive based on what they're looking at. It just gives you more area to serve and then also avoids potentially some of the water issues and everything else. So Jessica yeah. can speak to it, but that's what we were looking at, Chris. I think preliminarily <laughs> subject to what the board was thinking and then CPL will come back with more proposal if we want. But I agree, Al, you know, there's one aspect of electrical that should be done irregardless. Mm -hmm. I, and that's the whole that, box that and, and, Tom, and then yeah. it's electrical to the band stage, you know, which would be a separate one. Yeah, Jessica, I think you know, also believes if we had a much better permanent band stage at a better height, well, why don't you address it? Then we get more, you know, bands that want to play, more rentals and more use. So, Jessica. So during COVID, we had an uptick of people who were interested in using that for outdoor performances and so many things that had been indoors moved outdoors and that trend is actually continuing. People are really liking these things outdoors um, and the prefab options that we were shown by CPL are uh, very attractive. The only modification I had asked uh, for to them is they were built kind of lower to the ground and the ground is a little flat out there. So they would definitely need to be built up a little higher. But in terms of moving the band shell, if we are definitely taking it down and definitely building a new one, it does need to go somewhere else. Uh, for several reasons, one, to face the entire park, like Councilman Phillips had said, and then almost more importantly, uh, the sun sets right yeah. into the eyes of anyone who's on that stage in the evening, and over the summer we actually had issues where it was a, a very sunny, super hot day where we had to cancel because it would have overheated everybody's equipment. So um, something that we had talked about is once you turn that stage, there are certain shade, temporary shade structures, but you'd only need it on that one side. So it, moving it um, towards the, basically taking it and going like this <laughs> would really be the best yeah. option for a replacement of it, so. Thank you. What are you looking at in, as far as drainage? Because we know that's a swamp over there. What, what, what was your plan, what you thought, I mean, overall? Um, so I didn't do that portion okay. of it, but they were looking at basically, I believe, revamping that entire site. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the issue is water's coming off from the neighboring um, lots Property. and even the street, and it's all coming down to the low spot in that neighborhood, which is that park. Right. Um, and then it was, you know, they were looking at taking it from that low spot in the middle of the park. Mm -hmm. you know, back, you know, down toward the creek, but that would get, you know, Meadowbrook wouldn't do you, cooperate. So. Do you think an, like an oversized curtain drain would work? I mean, that sort of thing, or is it much more complex? <coughs> what I think was part of the proposal was um, some underground storage um, to mm -hmm. um, capture it and then release it at a slower rate, so, you know, so that you don't have the peaks. So I, mean, I think you know a lot of that is driving the cost because I think the uh, so easy wouldn't work. It's the it's the peak demand that yeah. Is, it's yeah. easy wouldn't work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know it's like every other park in the town. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you have you know as uh, Jonathan said, the water collecting like across the street. And we know there's yeah. already a pond, but yeah, ultimately that overflows in the yeah, pipe underneath the road to Schlock House. <laughs> so. That's part of the issue. So I think, you know, if, you know, part of it could be, Chris, as you said, some sort of drainage at least mm -hmm. helps with that, but the recommendation was some sort sure. of underground storage sort of retention, sort of yeah. like what we do even at Tri-Municipal with the sewage and the overflow tanks. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, the, may help when we look at rain coming in after a dry period, you know, such as for Community Day, but mm -hmm. otherwise it doesn't help a lot from what uh, Tim was saying to me, but I think the other two, the electrical and the band stage, you know, we really should be looking yes. at that, you know, and I agree with Al, you know, start looking at, you know, the whole electrical system, you know, that uh, means changing the boxes out, getting the right conduit, everything else in, and then uh, I especially think that uh, with respect to getting out to not just the Memorial Park, but Christmas tree lighting, you know, this year it had all extension cords and then had yeah. little boxes along the field so that it wouldn't short out, you know, and that we can't do anymore. 
So I think that is part of the electrical that we need to look at. Do you have an estimate of the time frame if we said go ahead and build a banjo? To design and build? Yeah. Um, it just seems like everything, <laughs> we talk about this all the time, we're used to, uh, I own a business, everybody else is in private business, you decide to do it, you do it. Right. It doesn't work that way with no. us. Without <laughs> so that's why I'm asking for like a realistic, are we looking at a year? Could we do it? Probably. So we were looking at prefab structures. I mm -hmm. don't know what the time frame would be from ordering to when it would arrive on site. Um, but if it was just to be built all from material, mm -hmm. you're probably looking at close to a year by the time we design it, bid it out, award it, and then start the whole construction process. Could you put together then a timetable you know, for us and present to the board or Tim present mm -hmm. to the board along with the, the breakout of the budget you know, amount uh, and we can then discuss that at a near future you know, board meeting, I think. Time frame for all three items? Oh, I, I would say or? first, you know, I, or we'd like to see all, but I think the electrical and the band stage mm -hmm. are the number two priorities, one two, right. two priorities that we want to see. And so, and of course, to me, you know, so if we're able to get stuff you know, really in place for community day, assuming we have it yeah. out there, and then of course for Christmas tree lighting and some of the events, because we do have the electrical, you know, and I think it needs to be uh, done in such a way that it can be providing electrical current to the various events that we have because as we know even a community day you know the uh, they had to use the backup generator you know for a while and so we, we want to make sure that we have that I'd prepared. like to see the prefabs too what they look no like. no that's what yeah. would be I think I want to see pictures I want to see the layout I want to see all of that yeah. Sure. yeah before we I think one of the things is good. Councilman Casella said Either way we go, we have to look at a the electric. minimal of a temporary fix on the electrical. I agree. Agree. Because it's dangerous. Yeah. So that, that's where we have to have the, the, the new box, the mm -hmm. new feed. So can you give us a, new out a time? Well, can you give us a time frame for the electrical? Ideally, it would be nice too, is to put one of those nice signs out like they have yeah, the New Hackensack Firehouse. We have to get yeah, the electrical I would love out. To see I've got to get the electrical out there first, but that would be nice. I don't think they've seen it. That should be part of. And I, I don't know, Jonathan, is that in the 72K? I mean, is there is there a plan in there for it, like the nice electrical signs they have out there? Is that something separate that we could that take a signage look at? Once we did include, but it did include um, site lighting, so like pole lights around the site. We should take a look when when you do signs. the estimate. Get get one of the, see what it would cost to do because if you have to run electrical out there two. for the tree lights yeah. or whatever anyway, how much more it. can and it be to do the? the and it would be two signs. The two sign out there, yeah. Yeah. two signs. So we don't have to rely on lettering or anything. There you go. Just something to look at. Not to say yeah. we would expend the money, but let's just get an idea yeah. what it's going to cost us. Please. And thank you again on your work on yeah. the garage. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for the uh, fences out there at Robinson Lane. Are getting there. Yep. Yep. Thank a you. Anything else, Jonathan, you think of? Uh, for Slot House, no, I think that's it. Okay. Okay, very good. Uh, Thank you. Kevin, come on up, talk about uh, veterans' activities. Good evening. Um, I gave each one of you a, a copy of what I'm going to be speaking about exact words, but I, I spoke with the accounting lady at the Banner Place in Pennsylvania, I've negotiated uh, lower shipping costs uh, activity. She's going to try and get the, the shipping costs down from 175 uh, to something more reasonable. And if, if they don't work with me like that, there's another Banner Supply local. I'm going to try for um, a sword out Banner. He's, he's on 82, he's next to, near Florina's alley. And he, the, he looked at the banner that I showed and it was very promising. So he can do it for pretty nearly the same price as the other, the other um, vendor. So I have banner listings by street in the order that I want them placed. I have about 15 pages, um, every, every street that we deal with now. I've listed all of the banners that are going on there so there should be no no question from the highway department as to what banner is going to go where. Um, and there's also some contingencies, like people want their, their banners on old, which is not happening. But I'm going to 
the side of 94, you still have some County Road 28 there. There are some poles there. There are some poles going south on 94 as well, 94 being all angels. Um, so that we, we do have an awful lot of poles on all angels going down past White's Corners Road, White's Corners, whatever that is. Here's uh, a quick question for you. Yes, so sir. you were talking about some of the prices and things, and you sent us all, I guess it's a preliminary invoice from Holiday Outdoor uh, Decor. Um, and is that where you're trying to get the lower price? Because right now it's roughly $1,500 for 13 banners. Uh, the shipping was, like you said, $175. But then there was some additional hardware, some additional shipping, which would have brought the price to over $2,200. Do we need to approve anything tonight, or is that just kind of giving us an estimate of what it's going to cost? What, it, what is that we're looking what, at? What is your question? My question is, is that there's an invoice here that you gave us for 1474. Mm -hmm. There's some additional costs that you put in your email. Do we need to approve anything tonight? No, because um, we have the money from the 5K. Okay. The, the past two 5Ks, we do have the money to pay those bills. So that's, that's not a concern. Um, but it's, you know, the, it's just not fair to have that $175 shipping thing which um, I'm trying to keep them on the straight and narrow. Now, they gave me an extra banner in my last order. It should have been 12 banners, but it was 13. Okay. And so they're going to give me a refund on that. And I'll give the Andriello family that extra banner. Um, there are 143 so far. Um, like I was saying in the second paragraph, the banners will go on the nearby cross street if there are no open holes. I'm looking at Cedar Hill as well because there are a number of uh, applicants from Kenner, uh, not Kenner, Kendall, and they all want their, their banners on one pole that's at the corner of 28 and Kendall, and the, I'm sorry, that's not well. So I'm gonna convince them that rather than use Spook Hill, uh, a lot of people do want to use it, but um, it seems as though Cedar Hill is gonna keep an awful lot more people happy, so we'll get a lot more, less phone calls. Um, so the price of the banner should remain as is. And like I said, I spoke with the accounting lady at the vendor uh, with complaints. So I believe there's one or two people that I charged 240 in anticipation of that, that being a good figure. So I'm gonna refund their, their monies as I said I would. Um, with respect to the, the Joe, uh, are we finished with the banners? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the Joe Enneser WVA 5K walk run. The vendor contacted me via email and said that registration opens on February 14th, Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow. And I asked Jessica to drop a, a banner to be circulated by our volunteers. Now we have two volunteers who are um, extremely conscientious at hitting every business in the county. If I hopefully can uh, recruit them again this year. Uh, so we chose April 15th this year as the date of the walk run, and we chose that last last fall. Um, I still have to resolve the offer of Legoland tickets to the top donors from last year, one of which is Giggles, which is also known as Good Times. Um, I, I'm gonna try and contact the people at Legoland, which they are not consumer friendly. They'll, they'll let you buy tickets online if, if you specify the date, which I can't obviously can't do. So, um, I have some really nice WVA coffee or tea mugs to offer those donors, as well as free prime location banner posts for the race, and hopefully get on it next week. And I, I assume that I could contact, I could count on Jessica to contact the necessary contractors for the race. Uh, and I say, watch, we'll have the snow the night before, <laughs> and we'll be up to 60 degrees um, when, when the, the walk run starts. Now, Randy um, is perennially trying to get a golf event at McCann, golf course on Wilbur Boulevard off of Spackenkill. Now, he outlined an event which we could do in early June, $50 per person, nine holes, lunch afterwards, 50 player minimum. Lunch, is on, lunch will be provided buffet style, and maybe we could have Duncan available for before, before launching. Uh, that's a Dutcher term. You know, it's not, it's, it could be a shotgun start, but what, whichever. Um, the play time is from 8 to 12. I, I think that we could do that because there's an awful lot of, um, I've, I've gotten an awful lot of questions about more events. 
I think mm -hmm. that's a good right. idea. I right. think the golf thing is is it's and as long go as well. And and working with Tom Barr, uh, I can get a of things advertised. Yeah, I uh, think this is good. So I think we can do that. Memorial Pavers, I haven't touched base with Steve lately, uh, and I don't know if, if Rocco, the brick installer, is here or not. I assume he's still doing business here. I contacted him, and, and he said he could get on. Okay. All right. Uh, with our weather, I, I really hope he's here and ready to go. I have a couple of dozen bricks in the storage area in the uh, emergency services building, um, and more to order, which takes less than a week. Um, the Sword Out banner. I spoke with uh, Mr. Cavasini, and I, he gave me a photo um, of Jacobus, and I'll look up the data and the facts plus what, what uh, Cavasini gave me uh, to form a banner. And uh, I, may, I may just use that local vendor as a test. He said he can duplicate the banners with the same thickness of, of uh, yeah, vinyl. And like I said before, at the same, roughly the same price. So it should be a good deal. And I just need the hardware, which I find the hardware is good and solid. Now, um, one thing that I do, I take all of those brackets that you see on the poles into my garage and I drill holes in them so that we can use screws to affix those banner posts, those, those holders. We can affix them to the poles. And, um, because the very gigantic, and the, the, so it, the one band will not go around there to hold those, those uh, banner holders, the pole holders in place, so we'd rather use screws. And we apparently haven't found any problems with that. Um, so if, if it turns out that the banner provider, the local vendor, comes out with a different, um, a different design, which he said he could duplicate what we have, if it's a little bit different, it really won't make any difference, because we can say that it's historic Jacobus. Mm. That's all I have. Good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much, Kevin, for the update. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, congratulations on your appointment. Oh, yeah. You mentioned yeah. it to the board. I'm now working for the county. Uh, I was volunteering at Castle Point to do, I was working with DAV, which is Disabled American Veterans. I was a department service officer, department of state, and we were entertaining to help them file for disability or um, uh, a DIC uh, or a, a benefits or a widow's benefit. So we were doing all of those things. I trained a couple of guys. They're backfilling for me. Um, Adam Roach approached me and asked me if I wanted to work for the county. And I said, yes. I'm going to be certified by the American Legion, which is um, obviously a very good organization, and they're serious about should be uh, able to about everything, anything. Well, what are you um, going to be doing for the county? Pardon me? What are you going to be doing for the county? A service officer. Same okay. thing. Same thing? Um, yeah. Uh, I believe it's uh, middle of next month. I'm going to be speaking with the, uh, a lady about a widow's pension, a death pension. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, I And know. it's, uh, um, you know, there's one other thing. I spoke with somebody about the Veterans Cemetery at the Wappinger Rural Cemetery. So that's something I'm gonna be getting involved in because the county wants to uh, build a veterans area there. So there's talks ongoing right now. But well, I, they've I already started, the road's in place and they wanna yes. have that dedicated, whether it's Memorial Day or Veterans right. Day. Right, right, and where uh, there's, there's just a concern about the size of the monument and Correct. all of that. Yep. So um, I'll report back on that. Thank you. Nice. Excellent. Thank you. Congratulations, Kevin. But he's going to Thank need you. more volunteers to help him. Thanks for your service, Kevin. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jessica, come on up and talk about fee schedule and community day and other things. Please. Don't be, don't be scared by the packet size. We're only talking about one or two things that are Is this the same thing? Um, or, this, this one's I've got it all updated. Four okay. Four Mark, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for being understanding that I was not able to make uh, the last meeting. It's been a uh, interesting 2023 so far, to say the least. Glad you're doing better. Oh, yeah. thank and you. Mom's doing better. 
I was approved to drive again today, so yeah. that's my favorite uh, <laughs> news this week. That's yeah, true. No sling today. Yeah, no sling. That's all right. I fractured my elbow, if you, <laughs> if you didn't know. No, we didn't know. Yeah. No. Yeah. All right. So um, the first thing I'm going to... stop that skateboarding. I know, man. i got to stop it with those high-risk activities, like walking. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with uh, the fees. Something I know that there needs to be a lot of future discussion on this as a whole, but there are uh, three... brief introduction. The other thing in this packet, which is um, updated procedures for our facility rentals, which does not include uh, athletic fields. We consider athletic field rentals different than facility rentals. Facility rentals are things like pavilions and such. Um, so I'm not going to go through that form with you, just wanted to give you a little bit of the intent behind it, which is Events are getting more complicated. Rentals are getting more complicated. People want to do things differently than they did uh, you know, 10 years ago with rentals. They rent a park. They want to hold a vendor fair, things like that. So the form uh, that's in this packet, it's actually the first thing in the packet, was something that I put together uh, in cooperation with the zoning administrator and the fire inspector. Um, it's not up for adoption tonight. There's still some uh, language that Jim and I had been talking about in terms of on-site accident reporting, but I just think that um, in, your, in your spare time, if you could take a look through that, because it's a, a pretty comprehensive document. Um, but then we'll jump right to page 14, which is we start to get into the table of fees for things. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them. I know that there's a lot of discussion to be had at a future time, but the three things that are time sensitive within this uh, table of proposed fees are the Robinson Lane baseball fields, as well as the Quiet, uh, not Quiet Acres, Marts Field Pavilion, and then on the back, the summer camp fees. Those are all time sensitive, one, because for camp, we'd like to start registrations uh, as soon as possible. Uh, for Robinson Lane, it's because those seasons are getting ready to get started. And we already have folks who have submitted times that we've been holding in queue, uh, letting them know that these prices were likely to increase uh, and we would not be approving their use until we had the new fees. And it's a very similar thing for the Marksfield Pavilion. until we had the updated fee schedule. So if we could focus on those three this evening, um, it would help us move forward a lot of processes that are uh, in a holding pattern right now in our department. So for the first one, the Robinson Lane? Correct. Prior was $25 for three hours, and you want to make it $50 for three hours, correct? Correct. Just to bring us, it's not completely comparable with other municipalities. They are higher, um, but you can't go too uh, high too fast with these numbers because when you think of um, think of a program registration, if that goes up, say ten dollars, that person's only getting hit with that increase one time. When it comes to something like the baseball fields, the person's going to be or the league is going to be getting hit with that price increase a hundred times of a year so there does need to be a little sensitivity in terms of really putting a, a smack towards the wallet so there's a couple out here there's east fish Kill and poughkeepsie that are 55 dollars for three hours for residents and it's significantly more for non-residents so if you brought it up to 50 we're more in line with other towns we are, and for facility rentals, so for our programs, you'll see that we have non-resident and resident fees. Um, I am a little bit of a bucker of tradition when it comes to doing resident versus non-resident uh, fees for facility rentals. If you look into the way these other towns handle them, it adds an awful lot of work where they're making 
um, a kids travel team submit a roster and then doing percentages of how, how <clears throat> pardon, how many of the kids on that team are from the municipality and how many aren't. And if you fall one short, you're paying the non-resident fee. It gets, it gets very complicated. And in terms of pavilion rentals, well, the easiest thing to do then is have, uh, you know, your friend that lives in the town be the person who rents the pavilion for you. So it, it just seems like either an intense amount of additional work and then something with a very easy workaround. So from a Marsfield Pavilion perspective, it's 75 to 150, depending on how many number of people are there, correct? So under the current structure, yes. So that's another thing where we have a loophole that we're somewhat closing, which is uh, if you know that the price is so much for a certain sized group and so much for another sized group, which other municipalities don't really factor in until you start getting into the three and four hundredths uh, for an event, uh, you're always going to say you have the fewer number of people because I, we're talking the difference between like 50 and 100 people. So to just go with the higher cost, it's still less than most other municipalities, which are on the uh, price comparison that I gave you as well. If we went to the $50 at Robinson, do you see any drop off on the rentals from last year? It is a good possibility. Have those that rent the park, so they've been, they've been made aware that there is a potential price increase. We just haven't they told have them been, how much. Exactly. Um, I have let them know, listen, it's going up. I let them know at the end of last season because, of course, um, you know, these are the kinds of things that are getting compiled months in, in advance before they even get presented. Uh, they knew an increase was coming. They did not know what it would be. If we go to $50, we're still the cheapest in the area. Yeah. One of, yeah. That's so, true. I mean, it's so somebody can say, we'll go elsewhere. You're going to pay more money, so don't tell me it's the dollar then. So it's. Yeah. <laughs> you can't complain about it if you're going to pay more somewhere else. Yeah. I think, um, especially like if you are looking at, like, I think there's one on the whole list that might be less than us. Right, Beekman. I, I think, oh, I. Beekman. Yeah, Beekman. Um, it, that's not close by. That's not competitive <laughs> no. with us. So, so you're also talking distance. Yeah. How far are they willing to travel for a cheaper price? Well, they're twenty dollars per hour. So if you multiply it times three, they're sixty bucks, right? Right. So we're mm -hmm. still cheaper. So you're still cheaper. Yeah. Oh yes. For Beekman. Yeah. Yes. I don't remember who I saw that I thought was less than us. Sorry. The Grange is forty dollars an hour. Yeah. There's one hundred twenty bucks versus fifty dollars. Which one was? So mm -hmm. I, I think I'm in favor of, of raising the, the rates, at least on this one, from 25 to, to $50, again, still being the cheapest in the area. Yeah. I know what I was thinking of. Sorry. It was that we would still only be three, um, not three, five, uh, $5 behind still at the higher price. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, you know I, I'd say that perhaps if there was some real hardship case, we can always, you know, consider it, but I think as a general rule, no, you know, I, I think we go with a standard rate increase, mm -hmm. Jessica's recommending. I agree. All right. Um, so again, uh, in do terms of the- Do we need a motion? No? Probably we should. We're, Jane, do we need do a we motion to increase that, or can yes. she automatically do yes. that? No, you want to do all three, or you can we do Well, I, I think we want to take a look at these individually. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's do them okay. individually. So let's have a motion for Robinson Lane uh, increase. When would this take effect? Immediately. That's why we've been holding. For the spring, April. Yeah, that's why we've been holding those rentals in queue um, and saying, listen, we know the rates are going up. Thank you su for submitting your dates. Those dates are held for you, but you're not confirmed until we get our new rates. And, and right now we're talking about Robinson. Alone. Yes, we're, we're, we're talking only about talking about right. Robinson. Right. Well, I just, individual discussion well, I just read others. this from. Yes. You know, and they've already paid 50%. No, they haven't paid us anything. He's talking the teams about. teams have already paid 50%. He, he's talking about collecting from his players. 
So um, what is being conveyed in the letter that was given to the board is that the league has already set their fees for their players. So this is how much it costs you to come in and play on our league. And their feeling is that since they've already set those fees, they feel like there may be uh, an inability to then account for the fact that we're raising our fees, which is what Which is that, legitimate. Yeah. I mean, I agree yeah. with him. And I mean, lovely, I could see yeah. starting so this is, this is not the, But this is not normal Little League fees, right? This is for those that use the big league fields, correct? Um, this is Hudson Valley Adult Baseball yeah. Association. That particular right, league is an adult league. It's an adult right. league is my point. Yeah. So, I mean, is there a difference? Yes. Really? Yes. I mean, yes. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Big. But why wouldn't we also honor this? Not to do it until September for them. Well, if you're going to do it, now's the time to do it. I understand that the guy went out and, and you know, did 50%. Yeah, I, I, just, I just think it would just be better for them if we just started in September. I mean, are we going to make that much more money by, by doing this with them? I, How I much are we going to make? Several thousand dollars. I don't think it's about the money. I think it's more of, hey, listen, we want to be in line with other towns. Yeah, but doing it now, I think is an issue Whereas only only because he's already tried to do it ahead of time right They're, well you plan that's what you try yeah. to do with leagues but but they were told a while ago that we we're going to have increased fees so <coughs> and we're still the lowest in the area at 50 no i'm not saying that we're not i'm just mm -hmm. saying from being um in this league and doing this extra work or work that he has done mm. that you know I think it would be fair to do September for just this league or for this you, you can't do it for one league and not any other league you gotta eat I mean anybody that's already I guess the, the only signed. line that could be drawn if we chose to draw a line would be who has submitted and who hasn't submitted yeah that would be I, fair I don't know if that's a compromise the board is willing to make but, but that, that would be fair. Somebody's already submitted. And they're, they're I, under I think the you do it for all or none. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't say, well, Jessica's coming in later, and now we're going to charge her a 50. No, I'm And this gentleman's saying, coming in, you're going to charge him 25. It's not fair. If they already submitted, you know, they've already submitted. To, to him, not to the town. To I'm him. Sorry? To him. He collected the money. Okay, but there That's are, different than the town collecting the money. Town doesn't have that money. Yeah, so we haven't collected any money from them. Yeah. We're just holding their dates for them until we decided how we were going to proceed with the fees, which they were aware that that's why their date or why their bookings had not been finalized. So what I had said to the couple of leagues actually that have submitted their dates is the dates are yours, but we're not confirming them until we have our prices set at which point you can make a decision <laughs> about okay. whether you'd I'm like to I'm proceed. just saying if they've already yeah. made commitments, this is where we're going to buy for 2023. Yeah. Um, you let them go. That's my personal opinion. But I'm um, one vote. But if I was, they just play softball, I know. And you know how hard it is to get players. Yeah. Think about it this way. It's $25 is 15 people on the team. I'm just saying. Okay. I just think it's fair to Everybody do that. But it's up to you guys. I'll second it. Okay. No resolution. Yeah, and I'll make a motion that we approve the rate increase to fifty dollars for everybody across the board from the twenty five. Second. Okay, motion. For Robinson, Robinson Lane only. specifically. Yes. Yeah. At this time. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. Nays? Nay. One. Okay. okay. No abstention, so the motion passes. But thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, good. Thanks for raising. The second one is uh, Mark's raising the motion for it. He'd like to proceed with that. Um, you know, again, that's a, a time sensitive one. We have those in the queue. This would be a much smaller financial impact should the board decide to say, listen. later. Um, it's about three rentals, so we're talking about a loss of under $1,000. So, um, 
So uh, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. I'm not for changing this one. Okay. Yeah, that's... Leave it. Yeah, so we're going to leave it at the 75 to the 150? I want to keep it as is today. As it is. Oh, as it is today. Okay. Right. Nice. All right. That is doable. And the last one is camp. So in our budget today for the last one, we've already got the added expense in there for the additional costs for the counselors, right? Because rates go up. Correct. And do we have anything in there from a revenue perspective as forward? Uh, to account for increased revenue? Yes. Nothing in the budget in the revenue. So whatever we do here is a pure ad, whether it's the prior or the current, correct? Say that one more time. So you have no revenue assumed in the budget for this, correct? No so additional no. revenue. The, the, any, if we don't increase fees, any additional revenue is just assumed because of additional But the revenue for this set for in the budget right now is the same costs based off of uh, the number of enroll enrollments we had last year. What was it last year that between the revenue and the cost? Do you know? So that would be a great thing for me to have had with me. Kinda I do yeah. know that we did have a loss on camp. And the loss increases each year as things like minimum wage go but up. It's been very steadily. How much, how much are we talking? A couple thousand dollars? Um, we're talking about $1,500. So, so $1,500. My personal opinion is, I mean, we've got inflation higher, you know, going up every year. And minimum wage. Minimum wage, yeah. you know, so I, I, I know where you want to do this $10 per, I, yeah. I'm not for increasing any of the rates at all for, okay. um, you know, the recreation programs here. I want to keep them flat to 2020. That's my personal opinion. I agree. I, no, I agree. I think one of the things we had this discussion last year was because a, a lot of the residents seem to be multi child mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know these increases could be a burden to some people you yeah. know so I agree. the the one thing i would like to say about it whether it sways anything or not is we have in many other towns and have caught um, a little bit of backlash for it is you don't increase you don't increase and then you slap a $50 increase on in one year. So oh. something that I'm trying to avoid is a, a one-time So I want to do a catch-up. I agree with what you're saying. I yeah. think that you have to be gradual. I think for 2024, yeah. I think you assume that you've got to do a $10 increase. I'm just not ready to give a $10 this year. increase per no. this yeah. year. Okay, no. that's fine. That means that prices Again, my opinion only. We'll come back. No, I agree. And look no, at the, it. that's fine. Yeah. It's, um, that's good because then prices are set and registration can start in about two weeks. So those Thank were you. Our Any others you need tonight? Um, nope. Those were my three time sensitive okay. ones. Um, and then the rest we can talk about at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yep. you. So then the only other matter is, and you have the resolution in there, should you like to go forward? is the um, community day rides contract for this year the only amendments to it are of course dates and times and then there are two amendments one um, they're highlighted in there one is just to, a little bit of a change in the wording about the vendors that we can have uh, it had it so itemized it said like this is what the carnival vendor is providing, which is, of course, appropriate. But then it said, and the town of Wappinger can sell X, Y, Z. I modified it to say anything that is not <laughs> described as something the carnival vendor will be providing. Mm -hmm. And then the other was a prohibition on smoking within the event area, mm -hmm. which um, it was brought to my attention right. was an issue. So the only issue I have with all this is that it also happens to be the biggest weekend for Meadowbrook Farms. Correct. And we take away a lot of the business with the parking and everything else. I think we need to be sensitive to their needs. I get it. You're going to do it. You know, the Columbus Day weekend is four days. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's got to be something out there we can kind of help them out a little bit, too. Again, that is their busiest weekend before Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, we, should, we should really look into doing something for them, whether we... I think we can try to come up with a couple of different I th strategies. I think we should look at that. We should that. definitely work mm -hmm. on that. Um, I, we have uh, effectively, ineffectively, I'm not completely sure, but we always do 
try to push people over there. Um, I, we do a lot of mentioning them in our advertising and things like that. So brainstorming a, another thing to go above and beyond that we can work we on. We need One to the, do that. You know, the yeah. biggest issues has been the parking. Parking, right? yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I still think it's worth and perhaps asking them to, for several of us to talk with them is, you know, we had explored with it. Yes. I think even Steve had is the possibility of working with them with respect to that south field, just mm -hmm. south of Schlott House. Mm -hmm. and perhaps turning that into yeah. event you know parking that we would help cover some of the cost uh, if not a lot more of it and then also the drainage because in fact it's what? part of the drainage mm -hmm. that goes through there is all clogged and would yeah. be a possible you know, way yeah. to help yeah. so mm -hmm. you know to me that's one way to help you know yeah. work it i know they've used it for storage and some other yeah. you know seasonal types of but i think if we made a you know a, proposal to them you know at least that's one way we could help you know and uh, what we tried to do this past year was close off the road a lot more mm, yeah the problem is is then other parking especially the firehouse and so forth has been a problem so i think yeah. looking at the overall parking situation which cpl is i think going to do yep. is an important part of how we proceed even with them but yeah. exploring that possibility i think yep. it's worthwhile then the Thompson's had also talked about, which we didn't have time last year, is a shuttle bus parking down on that corner, you know, uh, in that yeah. delta area as another possibility. And yeah. you know, Jessica had looked at the possibility of a shuttle bus, but we, it wasn't done, you know, quick we, enough. Today. Yeah, it, it was something that was really only going to get used right. the day where we couldn't park at the firehouse because it was the night of the fireworks. Um, and I think because we had the two days prior to that where that lot wasn't used, right. I don't think people kind of had it in their head so, that that was so a parking option. So now's the time to look at the parking solution. Yeah, Absolutely. of course. Right yeah. And I think that's one key area that we could perhaps help them yeah. with. And there's others, too, that I think Jessica yeah. needs to look into. So there's, there's no actually resolution here? There the, is one at the back. Unless you just put one on the dais. Um, yep, no. it was included with in the, the back. packet. Okay. I think it's the last it's thing the last the page. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so there is that resolution. And then should in executive session, I know there was another item of a possibility of a contract Jim, negotiation slash RFP. Uh, I have that information I mean, should you all want to discuss it in executive session. I think it's similar to what we had before. That's, does that have to be signed tonight, or can we just have our attorney take a look at it, make sure everything's good? Um, if we move on to something else, I can very quickly show Jim the two, the two changes, because other than that, it is literally the same uh, contract. That's up to you. You want to do it tonight, or we can do it on the, can we do it on um, the? If we, can, we can do it tonight. Okay. Hey, Jim, Jessica, why don't we why don't we talk about an executive okay. session, right? So you have a little bit more time so. to look at it. We can yep. come back yeah. with a resolution. That's fine. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, make sure that Jim looks uh, yeah. at it. So I, why don't we do that, okay? Then we'll come back at the end. So we'll just okay. table. Well, we don't have to table. It's not a resolution yet. Okay. That's all of it. Thank you. That's all? Thanks. Okay. Thank well, let's you. stay around. Yes, of course. Okay. So we can talk with you executive session. Okay. Barbara, we have a rezone 90 Smithtown Road proposal. And I, I well, why don't you introduce it, though, it just so we all are on the same page? Can you state your name and please for the audience? Uh, <laughs> so, Thomas Moran is the real estate broker who's working with Mrs. I believe it's Grosch. Yes, yeah, Grosch. Okay. to rezone her lot, which is the first lot in from Route 9 on Smithtown. 
So Pamela wanted to explain why okay. she wants that reason. The corner lot is 88 Smithtown, which everybody knows is a vacant lot, right on Route 9. It's diagonally across from the, uh, what was it, the Plant Depot, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to be the Car Carfax, is that what's going in there? Maybe. This, possibly, okay. So the first lot at the corner is 88, and it's a very, it, it's not really narrow, but it's kind of narrow. It's only 160 feet in off of Route 9. If the, if, if the commercial zoning was into the next lot, which is number 90, it would make a four acre lot, which is much more preferred by developers than just the two acre lot. Because the two acre lot is kind of narrows and goes up to a corner, which is really useless. So the two acres really isn't a full two acres to be able to be used. But if they had the second lot, which, is not, which would be a combination of 88 and 90 together, which is still short of the south side of Smithtown Road that is zoned commercial. On the south side, I don't remember the name of this. B&B Auto. Auto. Their property goes in from Route 9 into Smithtown Road. I think it's 314 feet. Mm -hmm. The combination of 88 and 90 would be about 310 feet or something like that. So it's not going to expand into the residential dis area much more than what, of course, the street does, and it would really be make the town in a position to attract some nice developer to come in there and make something really nice on that corner lot. Of course, you know, bring more taxes of commercial property than residential. Any questions? No. Is there any takers or anybody interested? Well, in? I happen to be a realtor for some like uh, Inspire Brands, which is the umbrella company for uh, Dunkin' Donuts and a bunch of those people, and Stewart's, which is one of my clients. And I have some contacts with, of course, our beloved <laughs> Trader Joe's. We're trying to attract them here. But again, that corner really, if it was four acres, would attract a lot more business, national brands, rather than just you know, somebody locally coming and building a little plaza or something like that. And again, that's, you know, it's, it's a positive for the town. It's a positive for the people in the town. Depends on, you know, what the, what the board says about expanding the size of the lot. So since we're run short, one of our board members, I think it's important to have Bill here. But second is, I, I guess, you know, we have the oral presentation, but if you were to put together something more in writing, certainly we consider it, and then what we have, do we have to create an escrow agreement, or what do we have to do with respect to that, Barbara? So we should have a list of things to be submitted. Okay. Yeah, you all should have the package. Where Linda Roche wrote a letter explaining why she wanted okay. to do it. Well, uh, we, we need to have it reset so we can see it. We've okay. had a lot of things, you know, cross, and so... But I, I think we certainly can, can look at it. Are there wetlands there? Or what's the, I on, recall on nine, there was some on, issue. When well, number 90, which is Linda Roche's property, right. which we're asking for the zoning change, doesn't really have any wetlands except way in the back. So that's not a real issue. But Mike Nowicki walked the corner property, which is number 88. And, and the issue with, quote, unquote, wetlands there is because the underground pipe that was put in, God knows how long ago, has long since deteriorated and broken, and that's what caused the wetlands. So I've spoken to, what's the town engineer's, what's that name, Bergendorf? John Bergendorf. John and the DOT had created a map, which is in that package when you get to look at it. And they proposed putting a pipe um, from the drain that's existing on Smithtown Road to Route 9, and then another pipe up to the drain that's on Route 9. So when I spoke to Bowler Engineering, they suggested instead of having to have the town and the state do all the work in the road, that whoever's going to buy the property have an engineer create a plan to put the pipe within the boundaries of the lot, which would just take the, the stream that caused the, the flooding into the pipe that would go into the drain that was created by um, the, the office building that's uh, one, not, one lot north of Smithtown on Route 9. So I guess and what is that business? Yeah. And that's Stanger, the, right. Yeah. So if, help my memory, um, there was a bank at one time that was interested in purchasing that land. And, at one time. There is and, there's a, and the reason was the wetlands. wetlands. Right. Um, okay. So there are wetlands there that have been there for a while. Well, the reason and it's not just from that pipe. Yeah, it is just from 
I disagree with you, well, but it, go ahead. I just look, it doesn't matter. But when you look go at ahead, the Barbara. plans that the DOT did that show. It's I've lived okay. here my entire life. I agree. Okay. There's go ahead. A, there's always been a flooding problem yes. to that building that Stenger and Century Twenty One is in. There has been flooding. It was fixed when Osborne Square went in. It's mm -hmm. flooding again. So if that corner lot, which is in the HB zone, were to get developed, there would have to be a lot of engineering, if it's possible. Right. I mean, you know, Until we Until there's a good yeah. engineering plan, we're assuming a lot. Yep. We so are assuming so just, a just great bring, deal. <laughs> just bring the paperwork and your, yeah, your plans we'll together, yes. and we'll take yes. a look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Bowler says, you know, again, I'm not an engineer, but when I spoke to Bowler Engineering, they looked at what the DOT had proposed and said, why go to the expense of having the town and the state do this, put the pipe no. in, in the property? But, you know, the reality is, is that wetlands have expanded over the last number sure. of years. We've seen this throughout the town, right. and the board is, you know, is certainly you know, dealing with that because we're not allowing certain development that may have happened 10, 20 years ago. So, right. well, again, I think the yeah. so. Let's get the packet. Why don't we, we have the information? The the letter is in the package, right? I think so. I'll look at the complete. We'll at we will look Barbara at the complete the package yeah. and we'll discuss it. Yeah. Okay. So, thank and you. And call me. Feel free to call me because my information's right. in there. But thank any you. Questions? Yeah. Okay. But that's part of why adding the, the, the commercial zoning to number 90 would. Make somebody no, I understand. Yeah, we, Otherwise, yeah. it's mm -hmm. never going to get developed. I know. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's okay. going to stay that way. Yeah. I know. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Oh. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Just for the record, if the engineer and the attorney is going to look at that, I think we should set an escrow of a three thousand dollars. Okay. <coughs> yeah, I think that's reasonable. That's fine. Yeah, All right. Okay. okay. Let's okay. do that. Thank you. Jim, you agree, right? You. Uh, yes. Okay. So Asking we'll do that. So, yeah. so I guess my, my one oh, question, okay. so the, the properties right now, are they still in different ownership? Yes. Okay. But that, the reason I am asking Lindsay, I went to Linda seeking on myself, and she said, I thought I could have that in commercial, but she, at the time she wasn't sure. But anyway, oh. without number 90 being included, I don't think number 88 is ever going to get developed, because no one's going to spend that amount of money to only develop two acres. Right. right. Yeah, we know that. Yeah. Thank you, though. Thank you, Pam. Okay, Steve, come on up and talk about pole barn. And why don't you stay up and talk about HVAC when you're done the pole barn? Um, several past meetings I've mentioned that uh, we've outgrown our long barn. The uh, equipment has gotten larger, and we can't close the doors, and had proposed putting a 12-foot extension on the barn so that we can enclose the equipment again. Um, in looking at the uh, project list here recently, and I spoke with my foreman and the rest of the crew, we feel we can do that in-house. Uh, I believe the engineers came up with a, a materials cost of about $40,000, and um, we expect we could do that if all the materials are in place in about three weeks' time. Uh, it would need to be funded. We don't have the funds in my budget. But um, it is something, like I said, that we could do in-house. Have we looked at what the contract costs? You know, contracting it out would cost? Do you have a quick estimate on that? John? I imagine it would be over 100000 Yeah, and definitely at least double what Steve's saying. I'm sorry, how much? At least double with what he's saying. How's that? Uh, well, I can, I can come back with more detailed list on that, but um, probably you know, yeah. I think in, in <coughs> we're at a, a, a place right now with the work that we're doing. We could right. jump right on this, and, and you know, we, we, the sooner we order materials, it's going to require right. trusses, and the sooner you get them ordered, and, you know, the sooner they come in. So, so my personal opinion is that he's got a number of projects that he's got on his list now. I don't want to take away any time, so I would well, the, certainly those projects pursue. projects are still in the works and, and haven't been decided yet. Uh, that's, that's why we decided we could jump on this very quickly and get it done quickly. Well, well we have a list of 100 projects out there that we're still trying we to. We do, and none of them have been approved or funded. Okay, but I think it's still a priority of projects that should be approved and funded, <clears throat> and you know, we have. My point yeah, is so they so should be approved and funded yeah. before we do nothing personal but the. the 
the pole barn. I mean, I would almost rather have vended that thing out mm -hmm. and, and have you work on other products that are needed in the town. Um, I don't like the fact that it's double the cost, but I guess that's expected. So can we put together, you know, Jonathan, an estimate for doing a contracting out plus, or, and Steve, and do a comparison of what sure. it is and the time uh, if you value get of it, money? Yeah. Yeah, get that to us and we'll take a look. And, and, and rather than, you know, yeah, I know you're going to do an estimate, but let's get a, let's get a pretty accurate one on 40,000, 80,000, nice round numbers, but let's get a real idea of what it's going to cost. I assume that the material cost will probably be the same plus a premium, you know, for the contractor. So, yeah, you expects. know, they'll have that handling cost and whatever else. But if we can get that list and even if it's for the next meeting, you know, it's a workshop, but it's still a board meeting. So we could look at that so we can move it along. Please. Thank you. And if you can get something to us, the sooner the better, and then just uh, take a look. Right? Everybody agree? Yes, I yep. agree. Okay. Okay, thanks, Steve. HVAC. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I've been monitoring that job and giving you regular updates on that. And the uh, I had reported that the um, refrigeration leaks had been taken care of and they were working on the compressors. The inside work was ended, but the... Johnson Control was still here working on the compressors outdoors and the control unit upstairs. And when I didn't see them for two days, and it was about a day before you sent me the email, I called to find out what the uh, situation was, and they found several wires in the second compressor unit that were disconnected and the um, what they call a reversing valve on the refrigeration lines was uh, faulty. So the parts have been ordered, and at this point, we're waiting for the parts to come in. They'll come back and do that. And at, <clears throat> at that time, once everything is the way it's supposed to be, they can go up and start working on the controller. Is that going to fix the issue? I mean, I'll tell you, I, I've been in the building a number of times recently, and one end of the building is hot, so damn hot, you've got to open up windows the other side of the building. It's and I explained so when the project started that the only control I have of the heat here is on or off. And I've been responding to the employee's comfort level and turning the switches upstairs. I mean, when the they call and say that it's too hot, we go shut it off. If it's too cold, we go turn it on. We don't have any other control to heat it. Does. You know, but you, there's potential, but you know, health issues here too for some of them. Um, people that have asthma, no, things like that. I leave it turned off and then, and then it'd be too cold. Would it be advantageous to this board to talk to the management? Of Johnson and Johnson, of I mean. I mean, get them in here. I mean, we, we have a system. Get them, they might be better. Not installed properly, and it's taken quite a while to figure out where the issues were, and it's a step-by-step -step process. You have to take, you have to repair what you know is wrong. And then that uh, exposes another issue and you know, it's a step. Well, they step had what a hundred contact points, but I, I can, I can, them, but I can put. You know, I but can yeah, ask him to come to a meeting if you like. I that. mean, the, the and the problem is compounded by the fact that the way the building is designed. So if you get, you know, it, temperature may be balanced in my office, but then poor Joe Paoloni and Leanne, you know, it's and that's the there. situation so, right now. Because this was never West designed Wing right. Compressor is operating fairly it's close terrible. to where it's supposed to be. It's the east wing compressor that's still down. So the only control I have right. is on and off. Right. I thought we, I thought the whole reason for bringing Johnson controls in here was to fix this. The, no, they are. And, it's and in progress. Yeah. I mean, it's been going they, on for how many months now? On it? But it took them several months, Al, to, to trace all the lines, you know, the 100 contact points to re-weld it, to refit it. I, you know, that's because I see it all the time when they're up there and crawl space I, now that's really what it's a tedious process when was the last expensive i think it's fifty thousand dollars so far could have rebuilt the whole damn system as much money as we're putting into it that. that's basically what they've done so if, if we need to talk i've mentioned to jim before about possible they're going to give know, us action. a full report when this is yeah. done to to give the attorney Litigation. what he needs to right. do you have an estimate of when it'll be completed <clears throat> when the parts arrive you know I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I don't, I can't, you know, the, the supply market right now is, you can't say when things are coming. The parts have been ordered. It's been about, probably about 10 days that the parts have been on. It's order. the controller issue, right? <coughs> no, right now it's the uh, reverser valves. Oh, the valves, okay. Um, 
And that's what they're waiting on. And and what you know what happens after that, I can't say. You know, it, it's, That's what they've reported to me, the reversing valves on the one compressor has failed. And what it does, you know, these units supply both heating and cooling. So the direction of the gas is what determines it's the temperature. The temperature. Yeah. These reversing valves take care right. of that. Um, and on that compressor, they're faulty. Well, you know, and, and I haven't gotten into a conversation to figure out why they're faulty. It may be again with the installation. But um, they ordered the valves, and at this point, we can't do anything until they're repaired. And hopefully, that's the end of the, the problems. But there's no So does that, that, well, that'll fix the, both the heating and the cooling problem then? I'm sorry? That'll sure. fix the heating and cooling problem, because right now, it's a heat problem. <clears throat> so now, when you get into your summer months, are we going to have an issue with the air conditioning then, or is this going to fix everything? Well, no, the, the, end res the objective here is to get this operational as it's supposed to be. And it, it, when they're done, I mean, I ordered them to, to get this to function the way that it was designed to do. And that's what we're working on. Um, when was the last time they were actually in the building? I, I can't, I'm sorry, what? When was the last time they were actually physically in the building? They said about, probably about 10 days ago. In, well, they were on the property about 10 days ago. Between outdoor work and upstairs, but they weren't in in the hallways. But that they're working on it. Yeah, but they are. They are, you know, and, and as soon as I had noticed they hadn't been here for a couple of days, I called to find out why. And what did they tell you? And it was the reversing valves. That they're, they're on order, and when they come in, they'll be put in place. Not, nothing personal. This has nothing to do with you, but I'm tired of their excuses. Get the damn thing fixed. Not on you. I get it. You're the guy getting them here, but... Get it fixed. You spent another fifty thousand dollars. I mean, how many times we got to keep throwing we had money, good money after bad for money for this stuff? It's you, know, uh, you can't control what the supply the, the market is right now. <clears throat> okay. I well. believe the lines are fixed, Al. You know, but it's now this compression. Right, and, so and like I said, each thing that they repair exposes the another problem. And yeah. It's just you know, it's a step by step process. And this, this problem here requires parts. It's not that old of a system. Sitting on a shelf. It's not that old of a system. It's not. Think, I think we should. No, I mean, it's not, right? No, it's a brand new system. It Can they come in? Why don't, why don't we get them to come in and explain what they're doing and when they're going to get yeah. it fixed? Can we do that? I, I'm sorry? Can yeah, we, we get them to come in and explain when they're going to get it fixed? I'll in. talk with Bill and, and see if I can get him to come to the next right. meeting. Yeah. Okay. Let us know. Thank you. Okay. And the uh, last thing, I don't know, are you able to give an upgrade date, you know, on the uh, grant issue and the use? You know, as Tim was looking at that further, since we're not going to be applying it to our, you know, Carnwath for Senior Center, you're, Tim was going to look into other possibilities, and I think you and Tim had looked at our senior center. Is there anything so update to report? No, no update other than what we talked about in our meeting. Yeah. Well, why don't you sh share with the, the board? So what we talked about is using the grant money at Carnwath doesn't seem like it's possible at this point because we only have it to use for a senior center. So what we want to look into is using the grant money here to upgrade the current mm -hmm. senior center and provide um, right. ADA access out the back, well, maybe fix the ramps Insides outside, the handicap ramps, ramps yeah. from the curbs. And Are we uh, allowed to? Because again, as you said, a specific, it said senior center. Mm -hmm. so it was very specific. So that's what they're looking into. Yeah. So it's rather than just give it back, see if we could use it here. Gone that way? Can you yeah. let us know on the 27th if you can do that? Yep. Please. Yeah. And what, do yep. you, what it would look like with your suggestions? That's the plan. And that's and that's the one hundred fifty thousand dollar grant you're talking yes. about. Yeah. Okay. Please. <clears throat> yeah, so they, we don't lose it. I had them walk through the senior center to look at our senior center here. You know what might be possible uh, improvements from the uh, handicap ADA requirements. So. <laughs> Off record, have the windows that needed to be fixed for exit in the building? Egress windows. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're have all they installed. all been installed? Yep. Okay. Good. There was Thank four you. of those installed. Thank four, you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Let's 
Yes. Okay. Uh, then the next item is uh, Jim. Go ahead. So, um, so the um, one issue regarding um, uh, last week, I attended the Tri Muni meeting um, on Thursday, and uh, Tri Muni is in the process of um, replacing the sludge digesters as well as some of the blowers and some of the piping associated with those at the sewage treatment plant. Um, the uh, digesters, um, I think, were replaced once, and the other equipment is original to the plant. Um, the total amount of the um, of the uh, improvements is approximately 1.31 million, and based on the capital design flows, um, the town's share is 49.55 percent of that, which is 650,000. So this was actually on that um, chart uh, from your stat. Mm -hmm. Or from your minister what's that from your minister on that chart is yeah. that what you're talking about um so i think um there is yeah. you know so on the Munistat chart they actually had it it's a lot higher uh, yes. 719 654 um and then there's a, a 4.38 million dollar capital improvement um which included replacement of the outfall um which is um that's the pipe that goes out to the hudson out to the hudson the tracks. Um, right now, uh, Tri-Muni has retained new um, engineers, CT Mail. Um, Bob Travis is the, uh, is the engineer in charge um, of uh, tri the CT Mail effort for Tri-Muni. Um, he was, Bob Travis was involved in the original design of the plant. Um, so um, they're looking at um, the hydraulics with respect to the existing digesters um, and trying, or the existing treatment system and everything, um, to try to look at some ways to improve the hydraulics to the, to, to the plant, um, which could potentially eliminate some of the, uh, the overflows and things like that. Um, there is a DEC, um, uh, they're in the process of renewing their uh, Speedy's permit with DEC and DEC had, um, you know, asked for the information with respect to the, the hydraulics. Um, also, DEC um, is also, as part of the Speedy's permit, um, looking to um, the town, the village, and the town of Poughkeepsie um, at, you know, increasing some of the efforts with respect to I&I, &I, um, which we had discussed, you know, previously, um, to reduce some of the storm flows uh, to the plant. So, but in the short term here, um, the $650,000 project, based on what's currently um, on the boards, is probably going to be the only project in 2023, and most likely the, there may only be small projects in 2024. So, but that, you know, will be contingent, too, on the village coming up with the money. Right. So, everybody, coming you know, up. so the village, um, you know, the village's share is um, 471,000, and the town of Poughkeepsie's share is uh, 180. How much is town of Poughkeepsie? I'm sorry? How much is town of Poughkeepsie? They're like 15%, right? Yeah, 190. That's it. It's only, it's a small portion. It's basically... It kind of goes from um, the New Hamburg area over to the Galleria, so it's not a large, you know, and then it would cover um, the area around the north side of the Wappinger Lake. So, so is, is each town bonding their own? Yes. And what happens if one of those can't afford to, as Project supervisor suggested, <laughs> what happens? Project doesn't go. We can discuss, discuss that yeah, yeah, session because there's other things this? that I yes. want to discuss, but uh, I don't want to embarrass others. Thank you, Jim. Not here. Yep. Okay, so the uh, item that we have uh, resolution <laughs> is 2023-9, resolution to authorize 
the town supervisor, town highway superintendent, and town board to execute the agreement for the expenditure of highway monies. I know that based on discussion I had before the meeting, Bill Beal is still looking at and we'll talk with Mike. You know, I don't think that necessarily stops you know, us mm -hmm. looking at it. I know we're still waiting on CPL with numbers for the town parking lot. Mm -hmm. But if, do we need to do this tonight, no. know, Jim? No. Well, the other thing too, right? You just got your 3.75% that you're gonna do the bond rate at, correct? So you yeah. should have a total cost before you do it, right? Yeah. right. So, right, I mean, that's, yeah. that's and, the other. And we don't have that tonight, we, so right. I don't know how you can vote on it. Yeah. Right, the, so this is, this is a resolution, it's kind of two parts. Um, uh, the 285. Uh, 284, 84, I thought really. we did already. Um, what, I, I'm sorry. I thought we did a 284 already. No, this no. is it's it's all part, part of, it? of it. Yeah, it's all. So there's okay. two parts of the 284 <laughs> agreement. One part of the 284 agreement is is the financial um, appropriation for day-to-day um, -day paving, repairs, things of that sort. And then the second part of it is long-term capital improvements, which is the the road um, uh, the road improvements. And you know, we typically we you know if we bond that, and then in the past we've bonded for two years rather than one year. Um, I don't know if the board, you know, is interested in doing that. Oh, we'll have to look at the numbers. We'll have to look yeah. at it because, he, you know, listening to the presentation tonight, it sounds like rates are going down, so why would I bond for two years at 3.75? And I think what Noah is saying is that maybe June, July, you know, mm -hmm. we come back and talk with us. And, you know, and that's the other But issue. we're going to have to do something with respect to at least this year's paving. Because right, Mike's going to have to yeah. put in orders for the asphalt. So, right. so I thought he had a, a cost from Clove already. He was waiting for the asphalt yes, cost. And once he got that, we see what the percentage is. He can figure out what it's going to cost us. And then, you know, yeah, I, I, and go from there and make I, a decision. I thought there was, I, you know, I thought there was, I could go back and look at it. We have a mileage list, but um, yeah. I don't think we have. Yeah, we have roughly six miles, but and no. And oil is coming down a little bit, so hopefully we don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I mean, the other issue too is I don't think the new blacktop bids, um, typically the blacktop bids run April 1 to March 31. So but I, I don't think we should wait beyond the next meeting, you know. Oh, I think we, by then we need to have cost before we make a decision. We need it, well, no, and, I, I agree, we need the cost. And as long as we get it, That's we can right. certainly make a decision at the next meeting. I mean, the yeah. other thing too is, you agree. know, with respect to bonding, um, you know, we could do a bond resolution for the Tri-Muni as well as a bond resolution for the paving work. Yeah. I think we need to look at, you know, at the total, what other projects we may have and so forth. You know, there are yeah. some other on the list and, you know, and, you know, at or below that two million mark, you know, that he was targeting, but that's still to be decided, you know, on, on what is the amount. But I agree with you, you know, and we have to see though what also amount, uh, percentage, we may take out of the highway, you know, uh, fund and so forth. So we've done that in the past too, rather than mm -hmm. totally bonding it. Yep, there's a little bit of fund balance. We have some of the sewer and other costs because we also have a, a van. You know, the other thing you got to take into account is the, as Mr. Phillips has said in the, in the past, the chip money. So how much is that? Do we know what that's going to be? Because that'll certainly go towards the cost of. It's typically around two fifty. Okay. Two sixty six. Two sixty six. Okay. Did we okay. get a? I mean, usually the award comes out around the time they adopt the budget, I don't know. Yeah, we haven't uh, seen the final amount, but I, that's what it's been consistent. Yeah, been fortunate. It's, a, it's in the neighborhood of 250 to 260. Okay, so again, something to take into consideration when you yeah. look at the total cost, you'll back that right. out, get the money back at a later point in time. You know, and the okay. chip's money too is, uh, it's a reimbursement grant, so you have to spend the money to Correct. get, right. to get yes. it back. Correct, right. right. So I but think I what we need, to I was gonna table it, I'll make a motion to table. Second. Second. Motion second, all in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. The uh, next item is resolution 2023-36, acknowledgement of the correspondence log. Move. Second. Motion second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. Then we have one item for special consideration, new business actually, in the form of resolution. This is 26 Myers Corner escrow. This is a refund of that, Barbara, if anything special to discussed with respect to the Buckley matter. Yes. Yeah. Can I see it? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. No. It says Barbara's going to refund it out of pocket, so we're good with it.
Oh, okay, this is different. I thought it was a different subdivision and I'm like, <laughs> so yes, so on this, this is the building on the corner of Losey Road and Myers. Right across and from Hannaford. you Hannaford's. did the rezone back mm -hmm. to residential. They're lovely people. Mm -hmm. uh, this finished well into, well past last year. And this is just the refund for the money that was posted to the escrow. Judy's okay. already done. And what's the refund it. amount? And it's $2,500. No, it's twenty one forty eight fifty. Forty eight thousand fifty cents, right? Yeah. I have a motion. I'll move it. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing the motion pass, and they can go ahead and refund. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the question. I had uh, received word that the uh, street lights out at Robinson Lane, the majority of them were not functioning, and I looked into it and. Um, I'd like to replace, with the, they currently have what's called a high pressure sodium bulb in them, and that requires a transformer. Um, I'd like to upgrade those to LEDs. Um, there eliminates the transformer and uh, uses about half the energy that the uh, high pressure sodium bulb does. Uh, be much more reliable and less costly to operate. And I had done the, uh, there's 20, there are 19 lights. If I order 20 bulbs, and a lift for the time period that I'll need it to do this conversion, it, it's going to run $3,800. Um, just um, that Robinson Lane line has 4,000 in it. I did have to rent a lift to go up and do some exploratory um, work on the, to find out what I was up against. So that, you know, when this job, if this job is completed, then uh, that line is going to be the, you know, done. I um, want to make you aware of that. And, uh, I'd like so to we need action right that. now? I, I don't know that, I mean. So what I'd like to see is who's the estimate from? Excuse me? Who is the estimate from? It's the price of materials. I was going to do the work myself. Do you have an invoice or something that shows the price? I mean, give us something. I, I got it. It's 3800 but do you have something? Yeah, well, I can send you that tomorrow. Yeah, that's um, perfect. I, that's what I want. Let's get that. I mean, yeah. you got like 19 lights. You're going to have 20 light but bulbs. To that. And right. you're going to rent a, a machine to... to be able yeah, to, just, to just replace send, them. Um, the, yeah. the cost of the bulbs was like eighty-five dollars each. And they last longer. And then the uh, the, the lift is a thousand for a week. And then, and then plus um, plus delivery is two hundred dollars each way. Yeah, the light bulb expectancy is longer than the normal. Right. Yeah. And, and here and the thing is too. If I replace LEDs. all the, the existing bulbs with the sodium, there's a chance that some of the ballasts are burned out. So that's going to be an additional expense and additional time with the lift. And like I said, this eliminates it and, and they operate right. at half the energy use. So uh, I'll make a motion assuming we get something from you in condition writing, on. condition that you get, get us something in writing tomorrow to approve up to $4,000 for the replace 19 lights at Robinson Lane. Second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing the motion pass. So get that to Please me. Please get that to us and also get it to Mr. Yeah, Salon. Maybe to Joe oh. and the board and get Sorry. to Frederick. Yeah. Make sure he sees okay. this. Please. My point is just make sure Mr. Paloni has it for his records. Yes. Right. Now, do you want me to send you an itemized list that I had made yeah. up or do you yes. want to see yes. the actual ads or? What is it you're looking for? Send the itemized. Right? Itemized is fine. Correct, okay. Mr. Paloni? Yeah. Is there any evidence there? It's actually, I got my computer here. Yeah. All just, right. Yeah, yeah, I just can, send I can, it to him. I should have it here. Okay. If you can do it now, that'd be better yet. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other new business before we go? Executive. So there was Jim. a resolution and a local law, a resolution introducing a local law. For what? For volunteer for what? firefighters. No, that's, that's not on tonight. Right mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill had asked if that you done when he's here. Okay. Okay, any other? Okay, if not, I have a motion to go in executive session for second. discussing personnel, contract, legal advice. Second. Okay, motion second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. Thank you.